in the eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> or the Mary Poppins joke. All you need is the umbrella. Yeah. I have lots of umbrellas. I'm going to bring up Tumbleweed RV Life with this. Hi, how are you? Hey, How's everybody doing? Good. Are you in Regina right now? We are. We are still in Regina. We're, we are stationary for the summer. Yeah, but your grandbabies are there. And yes, Badge, I have been sick. Thank you. I am feeling a bit better. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, I canceled my live stream on Thursday, didn't do on Friday. And then uh, I just been. Lucretia did a good job. Lucretia did a very good job. You know what? She messaged me and she was like, Do you need me to fill in? I'm like, Well, you can. I didn't have anyone booked, but. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm trying not to do Fridays anymore because you know what, working full time and then I've been YouTubing full time with my learning curve. And it's like, I just needed a couple days to myself in a week yeah. and like actually get outside of the house. Right. Yeah. So Christian, have you found out anything about crossing the borders? Because you guys had been talking before about... Seeing if you can go, hi Tracy. Seeing if you guys could go to your property in Mexico. So, oh, do we have lots of info? We've got lots of info for you. <laughs> okay, so we were we were at the point that we had given up on crossing the border with the RV. Mm -hmm. So, the announcement this morning, which we had scheduled for from last weekend, is that we booked our airfares. We're flying to Cabo St. Lucas in, uh, in November, and we will be coming back in June. In the meantime, we found out that there are auto carriers out of Vancouver that mm -hmm. could take vehicles across the border, and then you fly and meet up your RV on the other side of the border. Okay, auto carriers, is that on water or land? Land. Water, sorry, land. land, sorry, land. Okay. So it's just <laughs> actually what they are is that they're truck drivers and they just drive your rig across the border, and they're considered essential travel because they are they're they have commercial licenses. Right. So. So you're gonna get a commercial license? <laughs> no, we were gonna get a truck driver to. But. But then they came back, and they're kind of inventing the rules as they go. Nothing's in writing. Okay. Then. The guy called us back and said, uh, "Yes, we can take your vehicle across, but you need to have a you need to have a property or a residence." Yeah, in, but we can't in, be there in the U.S. In the U.S., so, so you're in going the US. to Mexico, right? Right, but we can't drive through the right. U.S. To like go. we cannot we cannot meet our vehicle, our truck camper. We can't meet the truck camper in the states. Because we do not have a property in the states to say to say that we are essential travel. We're going. We're going to our property, our winter property. Yeah. Now, basically, our daughter's in-laws have a property in Arizona, and if we had known this, yes. we would have got on on one of the utility bills. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we could have shown we could have shown an address with our right. name on it, and we could have made this work. Yeah. But it's it's too, we just ran out of time. In yeah, the meantime, they put us uh, they put us in contact with a company out of San Diego that can. So the other alternative was was basically to transport the RV on a flatbed all the way to San all the way to Tijuana. Yeah. So this company could do it. It's called transportation in bond, which means the vehicle never touches the ground in the U.S. So they could do it all the way to the border, but they don't cross the border. Right. And they didn't offer any help or any suggestions, or I can line you up with somebody, nothing. And so we gave up. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. at that point, we said, this, if, if, it, if it's this difficult, my gut, we now listen oh. to our intuition to yeah. say, don't do it. This is just going to go really it's wrong. Go sideways. Yeah. Well, you know, because but, even if you went and got, you you know some kind of property in the states or a bill there it looks like you're resident you can get to the states right. can you still travel from the states across the mexican border because isn't that shut too yeah no yeah. that's the easy part because we have property there. yes 
We can demonstrate that we have property. But we there. can't. But we can't physically be in the states, which makes no sense. How are you supposed to get your vehicle? No, no, we can be in the no, states. No, no, that's you not. You guys have to fly. No, 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 yeah. no, no. We can still fly into the states anytime yes. we want. We just can't get our vehicle to no. be in the U.S. without us. See, we have to be in the U.S. before they even ship the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And for us to receive a vehicle and for the paperwork to be allowed to go across the border, we need to have demonstrated that we had a U.S. address. Yes. And we don't have a U.S. address. We don't have a place that we call home yeah. in the U.S. Hmm. Now, now I don't it's know. Crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I don't know if one bill is going to be enough. Like I said, they're they're re they're not even writing the rules. They're changing the rules over the phone. Yeah. From to it would probably even be cheaper than renting yeah it'd probably be cheaper than even renting you know seven months renting in Cabo St. Lucas yeah. we still come out ahead and we'd be able to spend time on our property yada 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 but what happens if we get to Tijuana and our rig is paperwork is no good and they impound our rig and we have to ship it back okay. and so we just saw all these nightmares yeah. that we didn't want to have to cross two borders with the rig, though that was my initial thought. Why not? But we couldn't. Well, it sounds find ridiculous. Even if you could get it across, you still can't be with it when it's doing it, right? <laughs> Paul, it, it, Paul, it's crazy. I just, uh, yeah. Aww. You know, I lost, I lost so much sleep. I, I was, I didn't say anything to him. I was like thinking it's all going to work out. You know, it's going to, it's going to figure itself out. And I'm so glad that he came up with this idea of just saying, forget it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I was so like, you guys already that. booked your flight to fly out there. Yeah. And we were ready. We were ready to cancel it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and just put those WestJet dollars back in the WestJet bank. And, uh, are you traveling? Am I a researcher? Thank you for being here, by the way. I haven't seen you here before. They said join escapees and get one of their addresses in Livingston, Texas, pretty cheap. Okay, so how does uh, that work? Yeah, it's one of those mail work? forwarding uh, companies. I think. You oh, get a box number, right, Sonia? What was that, Paula? You get like a box number? Um, I think it's a PO box, but technically it's a. Technically, it's a physical address, I believe, because okay. a lot of places won't deal with a P.O. box like, you know, UPS and FedEx and all them won't deliver to a yeah. P.O. box and whatever. Okay. I think it's actually a physical address huh. on paper. But I don't know it's some kind of mail forward. I'm, oh, okay. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I, I, I seem to remember it but being like a, a mail forwarding address but it's a physical address you know yeah it's it's it hard to look into it i mean can you guys cancel your flight if you oh, did yeah, get a tour we can always cancel yeah. our flight our condo and all that my concern is that there's nothing in writing there's no official policy and that well apparently you get a physical address i mean it wouldn't hurt yeah. that would definitely be something to look into but then could you drive so if you had a physical address yeah, but we need we need a utility we need a we need a utility bill with that address. That's what they said. You need a utility bill with the address. That's how you get around. That's how they that's how they eliminate all these physical addresses without residence. Like like you said, they're 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 changing the rules as they go. Well, who are you in contact with to even try to get answers? Um, oh, he went online. They said basically. You know, we went through the websites, and the websites are fairly clear about what non-essential travel is, uh, and the exceptions to the rules. You know, the exception are if you have a child starting university, you can drive across yeah. to get them started in university and come right back. Uh, mm -hmm. Students themselves can drive across to go to school, mm -hmm. <clears throat> though I think Canada is kind of stalling. Uh, foreign students for coming into Canada. They are actually they're, right now. They're, start, they're stalling yeah. uh, student visas. Um, well, our schools are all going online anyways. My son's supposed to be in university in Calgary right now. They're online classes. And they just announced the, because he's at Mount Royal, and the University of Calgary just announced that the winter will now be online as well. Yep. yep. So, yeah. so 
going to take good control of the students, even so though they charge them more. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. there, so there were exceptions, but I actually I physically called the border south of us. Yeah. Paula. And I talked to the U.S. Customs just at the border here, a real person. And okay. he said, nope. You know, we don't care if you got property in Mexico enough where you're going, you're not allowed to cross the border. It's, you know, with your RV, that's just considered non essential vacation travel. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, again, if we had, if we knew that that was the rule, and we do have in our family, you know, people that have prop property in Arizona, yeah. mm -hmm. then we, we would have made that arrangement. Yeah. I mean, we were thinking about that last year because yeah. we want to get a Verizon, um, uh, plan. you know, plan yeah. for data. Uh, so, but we never really pushed it and drove it. And I pretty much all summer, I figured that we weren't driving down south anyways. Yeah. But if I knew that there was this loophole, I think we would have started this in July. I think if yeah. we had started the process, we could have, we probably could have made it happen. So you're still going to fly to Mexico. So what are their conditions for your health crossing into Mexico with the whole COVID thing? Because I know some places you have to get insurance. You have to have certain insurances that covers COVID. You have to have had a test within 48 hours before. Or um, Costa Rica, I think you have to actually purchase a plan through them. Yeah, I mean, if they all do, if they all basically create those conditions, then we'll just cancel. Uh, because you know we're older, and to get to get travel insurance that includes COVID, you know, there's a few companies that are making money throughout this. Oh yeah, and that's definitely one of them. These yeah. these auto carriers are also another. Oh yeah, and the pharmaceutical companies will be making out like banners with their vaccines, yeah. but the rest mm -hmm. of us are going into the poorhouse, and we're just paying more and more. Yeah, um, to continue to live our a semi regular life, so. Uh, you know, we've already paid our vehicle insurance for all of next year in Mexico. Yeah. <clears throat> so now if we have to pay travel insurance for seven months, that'll be pretty much the equivalent, the same as that. It just keeps adding up. And, yeah. and now we have to pay for a condo. And, and so eventually it's just going to be, nope, you know, yep. let's see if we can get this, uh, uh, this, you know, this actual utility bill in the U S yeah. and see if we can make this happen. It's a lot easier to test crossing the border in Vancouver than it is to try to make this happen in Tijuana. Right. There's way more cost in shipping to get down to right. Tijuana than yeah. there is to the unit to Seattle or Bellingham. Like that would that would be a that would be terrible. Get the get the unit all the way there and then find it we can't cross because we need all this insurance and whatever. That would be a nightmare. Yeah. 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 But right now, then, unless things change, you're flying across, you're renting a place, and you're going to yeah. stay there. Yeah. We, we, we've rented this place before. Like, this was before we did RV Life. We have oh, rented okay. this place before. Yeah. We like this place because it's outside of Cabo San Lucas. We walk into town, you know, the six kilometers to get into town every day or almost yeah. every day. Uh, there's there's a pool right, out, right outside the front door. There's a gym down the street uh, the the beach is just a little little further than that so uh you know it's close to the costco walmart there's little buses you can hop on to get to these so you know we don't need a car so we, you don't rent a car typically when we're down there except when we want to go out of town mm -hmm. so it's if you go look at even prior we didn't call it season one i i'm not sure if we did call it season one but uh, before that, just before we went full time RV life and decided to, you know, making the decision to go RV life, we were getting ready to do that. And so when we went down to Cabo the year before, and I think that was 2017, 2018, we went down to Cabo with eyes of an RVer before we became yeah. RVers. Yeah. So we have a whole series of that, which basically we're gonna we're gonna redo and upgrade and update. Mm -hmm. And so what we're, what we're going to do <clears throat> this winter is we're going to ap approach it more from a health and lifestyle. You know, for the last year, we have been on the road. We've kind of, you know, and, and <laughs> the My Sharona Cyrus is kind of, we've kind of been slipping off keto and exercising. 
We put on a few pounds. So now this Who winter. Who hasn't? <laughs> Well, this winter, we're going to do basically a health challenge, and we're going to bring everybody along with us. So we're going to do the befores. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. And, oh, and no. We'll do the weigh-ins and the measurements and all that. At oh, the beginning, the once, we're not going to do oh, it. Oh, that's so vulnerable. And, and uh, so we're, we're putting it out there. So we the thing is. And we're old, so it's going to take a little bit longer anyway. To, to, <laughs> To turn this train, turn this this train, crazy train back uh, a little bit you know, back it's on funny track. Because my brother's family just came from Vancouver to Regina um, just the other day, and my, I hadn't seen my nephew in almost a year. And I said, "So, have you been watching Auntie on YouTube?" "Oh yeah, I have." And you look skinnier on YouTube. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, wow! I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> the stuff you guys don't see. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, wow. he's it's so shame. cute. He's like not even. Well, he's gonna be five soon, but oh wow! Oh, there you go. Honesty, eh? Just I know it, it's it's so genuine. I, I, I I don't know. Like our like the grandkids, you know, they never they never said anything, but uh, yeah. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got somebody coming in the door. Hey, Brayden, I'm on live stream. Hey, I want to ask Sonia. Did you did you guys ever do you guys play where you are now? You ever DJ where you are now? I do. I do. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, when this whole uh thing started, um, well, I don't want to give too much away because I'm on. I'm going to be on interview with the uh, with Paula on the Thursday. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what uh, I I when the whole COVID thing started, um, we they weren't allowed to do entertainment at the campgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when they finally, I'll give you the short version. When when we finally were allowed, um, I was able to I DJ from my campsite. Yeah, I heard I heard that. Uh, where what I was watching you on another. Another channel, and and uh, I, I can't think, remember. I the think name. it was with uh, the band Bob, G Gina. I think. I think you're wrong. Gina with, no, or Bob? Oh, it was Bob. 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 Yes. I haven't been on Gina. It was it was yes. Bob, Bob. Yeah. 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 So. You said you were you were DJing and and the kids were were dancing on the other side or something like that. Yeah, my site is on a corner. Yes. So the 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 front of the the camper where I set up to play is right there on the street, you know, right in front of the street there. Nice. So people, you know, they'll hang out at the campsites or ride around on their golf carts or they'll block the street off so they can dance in the street and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Well, that's when, good. when we were allowed to finally start playing at the other places, um, you know, I would normally be at the pool or at the, uh, but then they had to put me in an area where there wasn't going to be a whole lot of people around me, but yet right. people could still hear the music. Right. So, right. More yeah, to come right. on Thursday. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll, we'll watch. Yeah, I started asking her questions when she popped up. She goes, Do you really want to do this all now? Or do you want to wait for my interview? I'm like, Yeah. Curious mind needed to know, but we can wait. <laughs> You guys. Oh, I, well, I am so tempted to just like rent a spot right by you guys and fly out with you as long as there's good Wi-Fi and I can work. I might as well do something different. It's either do that or go to BC. I don't know. I'm gonna see if I can rent a house this winter. That's okay, the thing. Like okay, go, so, if you go to BC, yeah. like I, I heard what you're saying, it's raining. And a little bit of snow. If you look, if you go to uh are you familiar with the channel uh, Taylor Dasman? He's not active anymore. He's no. from Vancouver Island. Yeah. Uh, he drives tour buses in the summer, and in the winter he was off. He yeah, and and that's when he would travel. And that's who inspired us to go with the yes. truck camper route. Yes. Now mm -hmm. he he packed his channel in, but he has a series. He's got a number of videos when he wintered in on Vancouver Island. Yes. So you might want to have a look at that. I mean, if 
if you want to sit in the rain and kind of the damp cold, or, you know, cloud. No, cloudy. and then you know what? My solar system is not going to be something I can count on very well then either. Like I'll oh, live yeah. and plug in. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. So we do, <laughs> the condo that we do rent is a two bedroom, two bathroom. <laughs> we call it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we tell everybody if you want to come down, come on down, you know. Yeah. We've had we like hey. when when we rented before we've had uh like family friends come down for like a week you know and just stay there for a week and then they go back to whatever they were doing work or whatever so I mean yeah we've had people did that to done that one I just I, you know what if you know I'm thinking yeah BC probably isn't the way to go and I kind of think like if I can work it to my advantage I can turn this COVID into a gift where the fact that I yeah. am able to work remotely, this is the one time in my life I might actually get to go somewhere warm and still be working full time. So I don't exactly. really want to pass it up. Exactly. But I need someone in my house while I'm gone for my insurance to be valid. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, rent, we had to rent our house out. Those. Well, we do, we do that regardless. You what? What are you doing? I think you said we do that regardless. Be free. Oh, you guys got another thing to pull up? Yeah, we do. Is that how this works? Wow, what are we doing? <laughs> and Pitch, by the way, genuine girl, I probably I could do anything I wanted to, really. It's just deciding what I want is my concern right now. There we go. Oh, is this where you're paying? Yep. Yeah. That's okay. Are they going to keep that pool open and functioning even throughout the COVID? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Hot. it's hot there. Yeah. And, you know, for I us, know, but some places they still shut down beaches or they, in certain complexes, they did close the pools. So, yeah. It's not that bad. It's, I think it's more in public. But okay. They're, they're, still, they're still kind of uh, have yeah. protocols. Yeah. Each, be, each building that we stay in, they have their own pool. Ooh. So actually, there's a pool for every two buildings. Well, like, but it's it's either in front or in behind. Whatever whatever building you're staying, there is there is their own little separate pool. So okay. it's, not like, it's, not like, it's not like it's a resort where you've got the the whole. So you can see the lineup of of all the uh, condos there. What? It's not like there's only one pool for all those condos. There's a condo, uh, the condos in front and the condos on the side here. They have that one pool, and then two two condos up, they have another pool. You know what I mean? Okay. So there's a pool for every two buildings. Yeah. And wow. and there's not many people there because the locals, by the time uh, December hits, it's cold for them. They don't yeah. swim anymore. For us, it's <laughs> they, the, they, for wear us winter, winter. they wear winter jackets there. Really? Well, oh, yeah. Oh, it's got it's a gym. Cold, it's everything. cold for them. Now this is the old picture of the gym when the when the location or sorry the man is it ever windy the apartment management whatever the owners of the buildings mm -hmm. they own so they rented out the gym space and now it's a private company running it and it's all new machines so we're we're pumped about that yeah this is what it looked like before but the the guy said there's all new machines so I'm I'm pretty stoked I because they they were kind of uh, well, I won't say ratchety, but they definitely needed uh, fixing. Sometimes they were broken. Yeah. They'd be broken. Yeah. So if you go, if you go up this road and then walk walk down here, okay, that's toward six kilometers that way is Cabo San Lucas. So if I go back here, so there, that's where we are at the red dot, and then you walk all the way along that road and to Cabo. You end up into Cabo. Wow. And the the uh, the monkey business bar is six point two kilometers from our, <laughs> we know exactly uh, from our door. <laughs> <laughs> oh I think I'm coming with you. <laughs> I mean, look, there's a one bedroom condo and how much it is. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're all the same. They're all two they're bedroom, all, two bedrooms. They're bath. all two bedrooms. They're laid out exactly the same except one side of the building and the other side is mirror image. Yeah. But okay. They're, they're furnitured the same. They're appointed the, the one same. The one bedroom looks like that. The two has two beds right below okay. there. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then there's then the other bedroom is one big it's a, uh, it's a king. king size bed. You know, they look all identical. And that's the bathroom that is that is attached to the to the two the the twin well not twin beds. They're a little bigger than twin beds. They're almost like like two doubles. There's the king. Yeah, there's the master. Like one has a king and the other one has two queens. They don't give you that. No, they don't. This they is, don't do that fancy stuff. No, they don't. They no, don't, they don't it's do not that. that fancy. That was for the it's picture. But you yeah, don't yeah. have housekeeping or anything like that. This is like renting a condo anywhere, except it's in yeah. Mexico, and so the kitchen looks different. And that the kitchen, the kitchen looks power is like different because power is quite expensive out there, isn't it? Sorry, what's expensive? Power. Power is yeah. your power included in your rent? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. But uh, you know, it's it's only hot really in in November. We leave the door open, the the screen door open, and um, we never use the air conditioner once. By by December, it gets pretty cool. But I mean, the yeah. first time we went when we first got there, it can be warm, and we do have the air conditioning. But each we, each we, bedroom in the living room has an air conditioner. So. Oh yeah, you used it. He I, used it in the other bedroom. I made him sleep in the other bedroom because I can't sleep with the air conditioner. It's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I stayed in a place in Costa Rica, and they had the the smaller air conditioners in each room so that you weren't running it to cool the whole place, right? Right. That's exactly what it is. But so, he, I couldn't sleep with it. I made him go sleep in the other room. I, we actually have a video with sunsets and sunrises from this view. With the cruise ships coming in and out day and night so that's a pretty cool one if you want to go yeah. back to our original cabo that uh, was playlist. the original original yeah, yeah. That, one of the first ones yeah so you know there's the is, king yeah this again this is what our room looks like it looks exactly like this that's what it looks at uh, it looks a little too fancy i yeah they don't have the tree yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they originally tried to do a resort style thing. They, I think, I think they did. That's why I think the pictures are like resort style because that's not it. That does not look like that. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna step down because my phone's gonna die. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks for being here, Sonia. And I'm gonna be visiting with you this week, anyway. So. Yes, you are. See you Thursday night. All right. I look forward to it. Have a good night. You too. Thank Here's you. Bye, guys. Nice. Yeah. So that, I do that's, think the golf carts don't come with. That would have been no. one of the well, to transport people around. Yes. It's if you know if you need transportation up to the top of the road. Because I'll tell you, when you first get there and you start walking around, everything's hilly. We're on the fourth floor, so when we bring our groceries home and water jugs, you know, oh my God. hauling that up. Like oh yeah. There's there's no there's no uh, elevator. Yeah. So definitely the leg muscles burn yeah. when you first get there. A lot of climbing and yeah. walking, and and mm -hmm. that's why we get into shape. We, but, by going by going RV life, we've stopped doing all this walking. That's right. Oh my God, I've noticed it. Uh, when we were in the condo, we were in way better shape. Way better shape. But the car, but actually the uh, the cart is for the maids. They take the maids. Uh, supplies with the cart. They also, uh, when you're at the restaurant down below, they use the cart to deliver to the condos. Like we used to get pizza delivered all the time, and oh. or whatever food you want to order from the restaurant. But you can call it too if you're at the restaurant and you're too tired to walk mm -hmm. because it's, you know, if you're in one of the first buildings like near the top, and the and the restaurants at the bottom is like, and you're just too tired to walk. You can ask them they for will. a ride back. Yeah. In, uh, in the golf yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds like it was probably a, some sort of almost all inclusive back in the day. Yeah, yeah, back in the day, you know, it 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 does look like it was like from the pictures. It looks like it was more uh, resort type mm -hmm. of thing, but mm -hmm. it's it's not run down, but it's definitely not that fancy anymore. I, I call it Mexican rustic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Still looks nice nope. right in Cuba. Hey, but I was gonna say. But it's, it's better than winter. But it's well made. Oh, yeah. It's well made. Yeah, let's, let's be honest here. <laughs> let's be real here. Okay. It's better than 40 below. So the only time we can't... need sunscreen in the winter is to protect us from wind burn. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So right here off the frame here in the bottom right, 
there's a little table next to the fridge, which I then put right here in front of that TV. Okay. And I did have, they do have, some of them have now, you know, better TVs. Yeah. Their TV, so that I, TV is crap so, right there. So I put that table right here in front of that TV and that's one of those chairs and that's my desk. That's my office. Yeah. Well, there you go. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Look, they take, they took the doors right off for this picture. Make yeah, they did. They took the doors off. There is a patio door there that they're not showing. Hmm. Well, so you guys do not private message me how much those are. Well, sure. You, what, you want to be a roommate for the winter? <laughs> I'll think about it for real. So, I mean, we, we throw out the invitation. If, if you want to come down for a week, a month, whatever, you know, just uh, just let us know. We uh, we have your email, I believe. Yeah, it's in our it's in yeah. our email. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Karen. Hi, Boucher Street. Hello. So, unfortunately, we're sad, but you know what? I'm I'm probably going to give it one kick of the cat to see if we can get a U.S. address. I think we should get, at least give it one more try. Mm -hmm. I would much rather be staying on our land again another winter. I would be. But then what, you know, you can go through all these hurdles and they're going to add another. That's the thing. We just don't know what's coming up next. Yeah. Huh. I but don't I, know. I, I I figure not get out of here this winter. I am not letting COVID get in the way of this for me. So we do have a friend in the Nimo. It's got a big... He basically has like a separate garage shop. He details cars and he has a little apartment there. And that if we had to, if we got to Vancouver and we, we and the camper can't get across the border, I think what we would do is ask him to see if we could just park our rig there. Now we don't have to worry about the solar battery uh, freezing. Mm -hmm. And we, we would just fly out in the Nanaimo, Vancouver down to Cabo then come back and then pick up our rig again. And we're... We're basically back into RV life. As soon well, it's as cheaper land. to fly out of BC than Saskatchewan anyways, right? Oh, it is, but we still took it out of Regina. Uh, oh. Regina, Calgary, Cabo, and then Cabo, Vancouver, Regina on the way back. Okay. But, you know, like I said, what, what WestJet is doing now is that if you cancel a flight now uh, within the My Sharona Cyrus uh, epoch, <laughs> Is that you have 24 months to use those WestJet dollars, and there's no fee. Usually, there's a $50 rebooking fee, so they're waiving that, and they're giving you 24 months to use those dollars again. See, so, I still have a $2,400 credit with Sunwing because I had to cancel it. Well, they ended up canceling it because I didn't get insurance because I only booked it like two weeks before I was gonna go, and. Then with that was everything was stirring up with Corona and they ended up canceling it on me. So I they wouldn't give me my money back, but I have a credit. So I wish they just did some straight flights, but they, I can't even find anything until December 11th is the earliest I could find anything. And that's flying to a resort for a week. Yeah. That's well, something usually has a direct flight from Regina to Cabo to San Jose. We Sunwing? had a, we had family come and visit us in Fe January, February, February, February last, well, this year. Uh, and they, they flew out Sun, Sunwing, Sunwing direct, yeah. Regina, Cabo. Yeah. Sunwing. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I've already paid <laughs> $2,400. I would like to see some of it. And, it, you know, why spend more again if I could take advantage of that? But was it was it an all inclusive though for that price? Yeah, yeah for two. Oh. Yeah, because yeah. my mom and I were gonna fly out for a trip, but then it got canceled. Mom said, "Well, I'll I'll give you money for my half because it was a really good deal. We tend to go very last minute, and yeah. um, but I said no. I said the credits in my name, anyways. You know, if she and I both use it, then fine. But otherwise, no, I'll just yeah. keep it." Well, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would be nice yeah. if I could find a way to use that. Then that would be a little bit easier to justify going. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But Sen Wing, usually our packages are, are locked into a, a resort, right? A location. Always, usually, a, well, not always all inclusive, but those are the ones I do. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's the plan, you know, and it's been such an emotional roller coaster. It's like, no, we can't. Yes, we can. No, we can't. Yes, we can. <laughs> no, we can't. And now we're at the no, we can't. Well, we can, but, but we don't want to risk it. You know, yeah, so it's really tough. Um, if it's, if we can do the Vancouver to Seattle, fly to Seattle and pick up our rig with a U.S. based address, then that would work. You know, it's like I would, I would even forego the WestJet. You know, we've already paid for WestJet. It yeah. can go in for, you know, 24 months. What are we going to do with, you know, that amount of dollars in our WestJet account? We don't fly anywhere. You know, but yeah. maybe we would fly RVs. We've been wanting to do the Maritimes. Yeah. But we wanted to do it in the RV. But I have family. We My don't family's want that in the winter anyways. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> yeah, but next exactly. summer, like, like next summer, you know, maybe mm -hmm. fly into Montreal or Ottawa, rent a car. I, I have family in Ottawa and Montreal. And then we can do Quebec City and maybe go, you know, go to Cape Breton and drive back, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. with, you know, do it that way if there's if there, the airfares are already there. So there, there's options for that. Um, so we'll give it a try. Like right now, every Saturday, we're updating on what the status is on the borders. And like I say, every Saturday, the story is different. Yes. Well, I slept in because I hadn't been feeling well. I'm feeling better tonight, finally. But oh, that's, that's um, I, missed you. I missed you guys this morning. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. I haven't plugged in and I hit the cord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are pretty tired. We ended up uh, binge watching oh. a show till midnight last night, just because it was ending. And the last episode I was just the finale. Get the, you want to see what happens next? It was the finale, and it was two and a half hours. We didn't realize once it started oh, that God. how come this thing is, you know, going on and on. Why and on. is it so long? So we didn't get to bed till midnight, and then we were up like at six thirty-seven mm -hmm. for our live at eight. And of course, um, we always go on. We always go on weekend RVing with uh, James before. and Nelly. Yeah before because i wake up on the phone and i look at the phone it's like ah they're six o'clock yeah they're live <laughs> already yeah so <laughs> oh you guys are crazy yeah. so how's your grandbaby oh my god he's he's a month old today wow and that went fast oh my god it flew i i told my daughter i said you know, see i told you it's gonna go by so fast the 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 no sleep the uh you know the, the, the so many feeds at night it's going to go by so fast you are not going to you know you're not going to you just it's you're going to miss it you're going to miss it so i said enjoy it even though you're cr it's crazy right now enjoy it yeah no stage right. left whether it's good or bad oh there's a good picture of him oh little bugaboo I'm finally to the point where I can be around babies without wanting one. <laughs> I think that happened when I hit 40 because then it was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, I'm that's done. true. That's true. Yeah. And me, it, me, it's like, uh, I'm so glad that she had a, a baby because then I can get all my baby snuggles and the baby smell and give the yeah. baby back. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't wait to be a grandparent. I think that'd be the best thing ever. Oh, it's fun. It is. It is. It oh, is the best for you guys. Badge asked, um, "Wouldn't it be cheaper just to fly to Cabo?" Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Because we have to rent a condo. Yeah. So you know, full disclosure is twenty one hundred twenty one thousand pesos, which works out to Canadian dollars about thirteen hundred a month. So it's yeah. it's serious. You know, over seven months, we're looking at ten thousand dollars. Yeah. We were even considering that if we had to ship the rig to Tijuana and it was five thousand dollars, we'd still be ahead five grand, right? right? Yeah, uh, and you're living you're in your own, own property. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're living in your own house on your own property, and the the uh, food in Toro Santos is a small market. It's cheap. Local, local. It's local. local. It's local. fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to Cabo, you know, it's Walmart, it's yeah. Costco, it's. Yeah. You know the little gross local grocery markets are more into the districts yeah. and they're further they're off they're way they're, they're the kind of local uh suburb bus routes which we're not familiar with right 
and it's, right. you know you need to transfer onto another bus right. and, and go into the districts so no it, it would be so you know if we didn't have to pay the airfares let's just say you know this we did pay the airfare so i believe it was like fifteen hundred dollars it was more than usual this year yeah um which is weird right know. but it's yeah it was it was more expensive we've gotten them as low as 505 a ticket i think that was on a calgary though yeah. that's calgary direct like not the regina leg but we have gotten them like in the 600s instead of 750. yeah uh but they did have and a promo that if you paid a little bit more so as i'm saying badge they don't own the condo nope. that they're gonna they own land that they're developing you right so now yeah. you have that land that you can't stay on because you don't have your rig and you have to pay to rent a condo and we yeah. have no house on it. There's nothing. There's it's land. We have a palapa, but we have no tent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, I, and to be honest with you, I'll tell you something right now, Paula. I, I, I love Cabo. I love Mexico, but there is no way in hell I'm staying in a tent on the ground. On the ground. Uh -uh. Now, now with, the, I now had, with the scorpion. I had a scorpion on my foot last year. We had we had snakes. We oh, had, I had snakes. Rats, oh my gosh. Rats, okay. Rats in the engine rats compartment. In the, rats in the engine compartment of the truck. No. Ah. No. Our our neighbor offered us uh, his tent his tent trailer. It's like no. Nah. I was like, no, that's that's just it's a what? No. <laughs> this is this is a house, right? I mean, this, a tree this, house. this is a house, right? This is a house. Yeah. You know yeah. so. No, you know, you got all the amenities here. We got, we even have a coffee pot, so there's no way it's electric, no, electric, electric coffee, coffee pot. pot. So while we're boondocking, and we have a king size bed, so no, a tent trailer will not no. work for us at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I need an office, right? If 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 there if if bugs can get like I mean I I'm not I'm I'm not a city girl, I mean I live in the city, but I can handle I can handle roughing it, but you know what? No. Now when it comes to it is different than theirs. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. So, so the condo is a compromise, you know. Um, um, you know, what are you going to do? It's like, we're not going to stay here. We just can't stay. No. Uh, you, you get used to uh, kind of a certain way of life. Yeah. And I don't know if I can handle a winter anymore. Sorry, but I'm from Montreal. I grew up, you know, with really incredible winters. bad winters well not mm -hmm. bad oh, they, they, I, 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 I was a snow person i love to ski you know back in the day i love winter i was i'm a i was born in february I, i've always loved winter the colder the better when it's cold it snows everything stays white the crunchy snow under your feet it's beautiful i love it but not anymore we're old we don't we don't toboggan we don't skate we don't ski anymore mm -hmm. What else is there? And, and after spending a whole winter in Mexico, we sure feel the cold now. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I got the heater just running nice and toasty. He's, warm he's on my, his feet right now. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> <laughs> well, the the benefit of being uh, mooch stocking with a uh, with a uh, Tracy's brother that has a beautiful 30 amp service, mm. so we. <laughs> We can run anything we want, a coffee pot and a heater at the same time, and it won't blow anything on, on but this I, side. But I still have yet to use the microwave. I haven't used it once. I did. I warmed up once. but did I had, you? But I had to pull everything out of it. Yeah, yeah. because it, it's, my bread, it's my bread box right now. <laughs> <laughs> makes, use, makes sense to use all the space in there, right? Yeah, I just, don't. I just don't. to warm up a cup of coffee, and then I got smart. We have like a stovetop percolator type yeah. coffee. Yeah. You pour it so back I, in there. I just take the perk basket out and just pour the leftover coffee and, and warm, warm it up, it up on the stove. Mm -hmm. You know, the other day I was I spent a couple of days in the ambulance. That's also when my battery died because I left the lights on. But I have one of those little perk things. I just heat up the water, put it in, and then just a steep sort of or whatever you call it. And yes. I. After I was done, I went to tap the grinds out, and the glass just shattered. I was uh, like, I've seen that. I've oh, seen that no, I don't need any more coffee, and I have no power. <laughs> oh, my God. I've seen that on another End channel. of the world, right? First world yeah. problem. Yes. Yeah, life yeah. is over. That's why we have two ways of making coffee. <laughs> yeah. If we don't have power, we have we have propane. We have, yeah, we have the perk. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there you go. And it's, and it's that, um, it's not glass. It's that metal. What do you call it? Yeah. It's like porcelain. Porcelain. Steel. You know, the, hang on. Oh, I'll get it. Okay. You'll get it. She'll get it. <laughs> That's so much easier than trying to explain it to me. And, exactly. And when we were, you know, in Canada heading south last year and it was cloudy and the days were short and we did have a little teeny problem with our solar system not quite producing, we couldn't run the coffee pot, the electric, the electric, you know, so it's. Oh, so like it's, cap it's been on camp. Oh, yeah. You yeah, can put that's right on. Really on. You can put it on the campfire, it, on, yeah. on the stove. And so we try, we buy We're everything that's, that's both stove and campfire ready. Yeah. Dual yeah. purpose, and then they don't have to boil in a pot and pour it in the other, and it won't yeah. break any more glass. The problem is, is that you want a coarser grind for those perks, because like the Costco is so fine. It's more like an espresso grind. You want something coarser because it just goes right through and you kind of mm -hmm. get a spot at the bottom. I call it Green Acres Coffee. So I don't know if you know the reference, right? It was a 60s show. And, you know, with, with uh, Zsa Gabor, and I forget what the guy's name is, but it was called Green no Acres. Idea. I can't remember. But she would make, she was a city girl, up, uptown girl, and they decided to move to the country on a farm. So when she was trying to make coffee, it was perk coffee. And you could put a spoon in it, it would just stand, you know, <laughs> into the coffee. So you know, I thought my grandpa taught me how to do that to make it look like it's doing that. The way you prop the spoon in the cup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he must have watched a lot of that. He must have, yeah. yeah. So, oh man. So thank God we had that because we couldn't run the coffee, and it's like, even though we drink decaf now. Uh, you still want something hot. You want that hot mm -hmm. coffee first yes. thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And strong. It's not for the jolt. It's just for the taste and the warm up and getting everything moving in the morning. See, I don't do decaf yet, but some nights I can't wait to go to bed just so I can get up and have a cup of coffee. Yes, <laughs> I've, 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 that's used to true. It all day well, long, that's... all day, and I cannot do that anymore. Well, yes. well, today it's like it seemed like the coffee oh. was done early today. Like we. We ran out even just before our live. And, before the live was out, we had no coffee. And our coffee was done. And I asked her after, do you want me to make another pot, half a pot? Said, no, oh, no. I... But all day, it's one of those days, the coffee's ready for tomorrow. And trust me, I almost started it this afternoon yeah. and, to have another pot. But... I had a I had a terrible migraine this morning. And that's why she said no. Yeah, I said oh, no. I no. had pretty bad headaches the last couple of days. That's I was like down and out that way. My stomach, and but my head. My head was just like, it yeah. didn't matter how much Advil I was taking. Today, it's easy. Well, so it was like two or three days, it was really bad. But, it's, yeah. It's, it's TMI for my for the people, but it's, you know, female problems. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, that's Even, not mine. <laughs> this, okay, this may be TMI, but I'll tell you something. I'm at a certain age. I don't need this anymore. I'm I'm ready to say goodbye. I'm done. Okay, well we'll have a private conversation. I'll tell you how you can get it without going through the change, how you can get it so that you don't have to deal with that anymore. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, what, I, what I'd like to see with us getting going down that healthy route is to see how once we get back on, you know, better uh better nutrition and exercise and you know, fresher air, uh, you know. A little bit more organic food just to see if those types of uh reactions if that changes that improves um i can't i can't say that i have really pain but i noticed that i'm not quite in shape and once i do something like today i mowed the lawn well i'm kind of a little sore and you know and this is the first time you mow my brother's lawn yeah. since we've been here yeah we're his mexican gardeners i'm, I, I'm usually <laughs> the one that mows the lawn <laughs> I don't miss it, Boucher Street. You mean you don't miss winter? Where are you at? Ugh. Yeah, I, I have to do things. So I guess no matter what, okay, let's just say Vancouver is out and I just plan to go south one way or another. All I need then is to figure out an affordable accommodation because I'm still paying my mortgage here. Yeah. I mean, even if I can only rent, like rent a room-ish, but they end up at the whole house just to have someone in here. 
I mean, yeah. I just need someone here. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It can be done. A lot of other people do it. Um, not for three hundred a month yeah. plus utilities out there, though. Holy crap! That's like that's doubling my expenses. I know it's 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 nuts. We, we have the same we have the same issue too, it's right? Nuts. This this uh, RV life is, is not paid for. <laughs> no, you know we're renting it from the bank. Yeah. So we so it's we we're have paying, we're paying for this plus now we have to pay for that. Oh, the female stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah I understand what you're saying now. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, please, please, so, I, I will not miss it either. It could just go any day, any time. So that's why we're so persistent. There was a time in your life when you were just counting the days till you got it to make sure you got it, and then you were good again. <laughs> we're right? just never happy. <laughs> not anymore. Oh wow! I'm, I'm I'm happy for grandbabies. I I'm I don't need it. I'm not. I don't want to have babies anymore. This, yeah. This so. Live stream. This point, but. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> I'll have to turn this to. And, and they also mentioned about the, the Victoria tenting. Victoria's ducking out. I think maybe some of this conversation was a little too much TMI. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> is it raining there too it was raining here tonight yeah, yes. yeah it, it rained we haven't had rain for good. quite a while i was surprised our son loves it because he's uh working for a farmer he's hauling for for harvest so when it rains he doesn't have to go to work the next day so he's been praying for a lot mm. of rain <laughs> Oh, Bru oh Bruce 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 Bruce. Bruce. this is better than Oprah. Well, if it was just me and Tracy, let me tell you the stuff we'd get into. <laughs> oh, trouble. Trouble. I could see it be trouble. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. But it's the AD. It's a, a sketch one, girls. That's why. Pretty oh, girls. Oh, wow. Pretty girls. So, but this is the ADD version of Oprah because the topic is changing. Everything. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> Keep up. I'm uh, good. I'm good. Um, I'm 56 and I said goodbye to that 12 years ago. Well, yeah, wow. I can say goodbye to it now. That, that she also was it badge? Yeah, badge. Everybody needs said something about camping. You know what? I I agree. That, that's why I said I I don't want to do no tent no more. That's why we have the RV. I yeah. mean, well, you know what? Not he's not in an RV in Drayton Valley in Alberta. And so he's been tarping over top of it because he, they, him and Al, they go south every year and they, we can't this year. Right. So they're tarping right. over it, everything. So yeah, they're right. oh. doing all sorts of stuff to make it work. I mean, yeah, I do yeah. have my house. I'm thankful that I didn't change that because I had been considering selling. Oh, okay. But yeah. then part of me is like, do I really want to do that? I just need a couple adventures before I make any solid decisions. Exactly. Yeah. You have to do that. Well, you that's have why to make, we do that, that first. That's, that's why we kept the house. I mean, yeah. the house is a leverage for this yeah. lifestyle, but we wanted something to go back to mm -hmm. that's where we're going to eventually retire. Right. Uh, I think a lot of people look at selling the house, sell everything because they want to RV life full time, debt free. Right. You yeah. know, so that they can afford the lifestyle and then they just need, uh, you know, either a small wage or they have a pension or a military pension. Something and, like and, that. And then they kind of work along the way. Maybe they work camp six months or, and, and that's how they do the lifestyle or they start a YouTube channel and a website and, mm -hmm. and they do different, they do different things, right. To try to yeah. get multiple income sources. We're a little different that way that I work from the camper. So I work remotely. It wasn't an easy thing to do. It was a dream that started in 2014 it's it the idea started in 2014 mm -hmm. i actually started the business in 16. it had ups and downs went back to work set this lifestyle up and then went back to the business so thank god with all this so far uh we haven't been too impacted too bad uh we haven't seen anything go down but the growth that we were going to see this year is not there no but mm -hmm. we're still we're still doing well so we're holding our own um, but everybody rolls the dice differently. Right. But to I don't know. Move, January, uh, come January, I only have 10 more years till my early retirement. Right. Cause mine will be at 56. Right. And then I don't, you know, really that's not 
that far away. And I yeah. think if I, I've decided, like, if I keep the house and just rent it, if I go anywhere, I have good coverage on the house right now that if something happens to me or I get ill, I'm covered. Like, I'm safe. Yeah. If I throw yeah. that away and then try to buy a house later and my health isn't as good, I might not, I'm going, I might not have the same option. Exactly. It's so hard. It's, it's, if I don't get to where I am, I don't want to throw it away. But at the same time, I'm tired of being house poor and just sitting here. Yeah. Right? I want but, to live. But, but, but that might change now, right? Yeah. You, you want a non-depreciating asset and the house, even though it's, there's financing against it, there's a pretty good chance with all the money that they're printing right now that inflation is going to kick in. And it's not that things cost more. It's that the dollar buys less, right? So, mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that a non-depreciating asset like real estate holds its value. That's the benchmark of the value. So your mortgage amount might shrink, right, relative to the value of your house going up. Right. And it's just because dollars are worth less so therefore your mortgage will be worth less so your mortgage will shrink your house will earn more value and you're better to just hold on to it now now that you're already i i think i consider that a safety net yeah it is a safety net yeah. and right now in uncertain times it's something good to have like you say you have you have a good job now you have a career right you have you know you have a good career now you're 10 years in you're going to be well i got 10 years you, left yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, but the thing is, by then, you're going to have your pension. Your house will probably be close to being paid off or almost or being paid off. And now you will be able to rent it, have an income left over after the expenses of running the rental house. Yeah. And you'll have your pension, mm -hmm. your income stream. And by then, your other business ventures will probably, you know, because you are going to diversify your income sources. <laughs> and you're, 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 you'll be ready to go you know you you will have the banking by christian you will you will, you will have the ultimate like travel life at that point you're gonna have to help me with my portfolio <laughs> yeah, say, oh, banking I, by christian no portfolio. no i i don't i don't do that i would just say stick with the house stick with the house yeah. <laughs> that's a nice i think maybe i should give up on the whole single thing and find someone that'll pay half the bills then i'll have twice as much money <laughs> it's not how i want to live my life though no. it's it's the the right thing that the tough part is when there's so many possibilities going through your mind until you find the clarity of saying that's what i want I'm going to go down that way, then you're not going anywhere. Exactly. You, that's what just, I, that's exactly where I am right now. You just have yeah. to tell the universe what you want. Yep. Just have that vision. Have you just vision. don't you just don't know what the dream is at this point. You don't no. have you don't have the visual. Um, but it's not just the visual, it's right here, right? It's what's in your what, heart. What do you what what do you go? hope to achieve what is the what is the goal and that and then live it's tropical. that's essentially my goal now yep. so right. how we did it is we did it gradually my goal was oh god the big one was the ultimate one but it grew the ultimate one was to work from our rv on our property where i could look up and see the ocean yes that was it mm -hmm. but what what it started with was us traveling down to Mexico and me working from down there mm -hmm. and to be able to do it remotely. That was before the RV. Before the RV and before the business. So I would go down for work. So I, I would have two weeks vacation. We'd go down for, I would stretch it three weeks, four weeks. I two would, months. I would, I would, well, no, that's once I started my business. But I'd go down, we'd go down for four weeks. I'd book two weeks vacations. I would work the first week, then power down the phone, like slowly wind down the emails, get 10 days off, not 14, because then I'd have to ramp up the emails and start getting active again for, and work the last week from Cabo. And a lot of times work on the plane coming down and work on the plane going back home. Mm -hmm. 
so it was tough. It was hard because typically, you know, you think of going to Mexico, you go for a vacation. It's like yeah. Yahoo party time, right? Yeah, that's what well, everybody yeah. does. Well, try to work and party at the same time. It don't work. So it, <laughs> it reminds me of your early twenties. <laughs> but it it took a while, at least for me, to make that transition to say, listen, it's not about vacation. And people would always say, you know, recently, it's like, well, enjoy your vacation. No, it's not a vacation. We just do what we do here. We just do it over there. We do the same just thing. It's warmer. We just do it in better <laughs> weather. <laughs> yeah. But it's still the same. We're not going down there to party and, and you know, hit the bars and eat at no. restaurants. We've done we've been there, done that. It's, it's yeah. So it was it, it does was, get old. But it was a gradual process. It's like, you know, the frog in the boiling water, right? Yeah. Bring the heat up slowly. And then I've only ever go. heard that analogy when it comes to um physical abuse, emotional abuse. Oh no. It works I've never heard of anything else. How do you cook a frog? Someone asked me one time. It, and I'm it, like, it works with putting desire know, into the heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just keep cranking up the heat. It's you're like, dodging you... the pin bubble. You get more tired and more tired till it can't jump out of the pot. And that's when you boil. Yeah, but it's a yeah. little bit like, how do you eat an elephant? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Oh. Oh, you smarty pants. <laughs> you smarty pants. Boucher Street, she's trying to get her son to buy this house for what we owe, but her kids don't want to be in CT. Oh, they don't want to be in Connecticut. And she suggests, yeah, keep going part-time yep. until I'm ready. Yeah. Or summer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, you're pretty tight in where you're working now. So, again, mm -hmm. trying to shift that covid started something and so you can base you have arguments to say hey look you know we did this by force i was able to perform you know maintain my performance actually i improved because i was able to do this this and this i think we should keep this group going and maybe i only come in two days a week and then it's one day a week and then maybe it's every other week and maybe i'll see you in two months <laughs> I absolutely miss my clients though. I do a lot of home visits. There's, you know, uh, it works slow right now because a lot of people aren't getting the medical care that they need to be getting. That's right. Because um, oh, yes. they're afraid to go to the hospitals and they shouldn't be, but I'm not getting the referrals that I should have. But the oh, okay. caseload yeah. that I have, my clients are doing well. So that just shows me that I've done my job while supporting them and helping them. See that that's the thing. Like before before he retired me, I uh I was uh, home care and then I also then I also worked in hospital laundry. And same thing, if I would have been doing that now, I don't know. It would be it would be tough because a lot of people are saying no to having people come in. Yeah. For myself, yeah. like well, home care, um, sometimes what they'll do is they'll get their clients to get tested for COVID first and then they'll start going in, especially when it's like seniors and stuff. But yeah, oh, my, I was, my, mine was totally coming in. yeah, mine was all seniors. Yeah, yeah. And I general rule of thumb, well, I work with all ages, but it tends to be more a senior population too. So yeah. Yeah. Hello, artsy dude. Hello, hello. Oh. Let's see. Hello. hello. Good evening to you. Who's uh, thra who is thrash metal? Sign Lisa's income. See, thrash metal and fun riffs. Never never seen that one. Or uh, He's gonna, here. Right right I've watched his channel. He plays a lot of Bru music. Brewster Street? Bru Brewster Street? Am I am I brutalizing that? How do you say that? Brewster Bruch Street? B O I'm is thinking French? Like French. I don't know. Boucher? Boucher? Boucher. I'm legally Boucher? obligated to disclose that I'm not qualified to give investment or tax advice. <laughs> Can live in a unit of a fourplex for free when needed. Well, yeah. unless I it's more topical, I'll just stay home. <laughs> it's one or the other. The BC thing was a fleeting idea today that I've already went, yeah, no. I need sunshine. And solar. Yeah. yeah. And solar. Once the well, solar how, how came far is uh, is your is your is your build totally done? Are you still what what what's happening? 
I haven't, I haven't uh, checked. We're going to do it here pretty quick. My brother's down, so he's going to do some filming for me and editing, which is fabulous. Um, like, I have my water system done. Like, I have a self-priming foot pump. I tried to do everything that I could with as little power as possible. Like, I have 3,000 watts on the roof, but I have only a total of 160 amp hours on my batteries, which the okay. most you can go to is half. So I only have 80 amp hours. Yeah. But I have a 12 volt fridge or free if fridge or a freezer i just use like the camco portable toilet which is actually working well now yeah. that i knew to add essential oils in addition to the other stuff um and i have a bed in there i have a stove i inserted propane stove i just haven't connected it to the propane yet the only thing i really need is roof vent and my diesel heater right for winter right mm -hmm. But I mean, you, you can't live in that in Saskatchewan. You're right. You're no. not. And if I'm going to be in Saskatchewan, I'm going to live in my house. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. I mean, for you, it probably makes more sense. Just keep building on your van. Do you have a shop that you could put the, yeah. the ambulance in? To I have it? a garage. It only fits my car. The ambulance, I don't think, would go in. Yeah. No, it's too tall. Okay. Yeah. Nobody yeah, know how to... I'll just. Yeah. But for you, it could be a summer thing, right? It's like you just. Oh, yeah, out here I definitely could. I just need something to boost my Wi Fi. And cell service, I guess, is a better way of putting it. Yeah. Oh, so you need a cell booster. Yeah. A cell yeah. Because yeah. if I'm in a hot spot, I need a cell booster. Right. 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 And, okay. you're, and you're talking when you're stationary, is that correct? Yeah. Like, do you know where Arlington Beach is? It's like, what, about an hour and a half? north of regina you go up past um, i've heard of it um well i have a friend that their family camp or they have a cabin out there and so i just drove out there with vita and stayed in it but um where we were i had one bar of service i'd had to go to the beach and park out there during the days so that i had any service okay so it's by Go there. Strasburg, yeah, Strasburg. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Didn't we drive there? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm and it was trying pretty to, quiet out there like, because. Oh, last it's, month. Yeah. Yeah, we've been there. Yeah, we've been there. It's, like uh, that area. Uh, when, when we were doing our um, uh, Canadian Prairies Road Trip Challenge last year, we were doing all kinds of back roads in, oh, uh, in Saskatchewan. Nokomis. That was my, my dad used to go there with the, with the track. With the, uh, we did go there, yeah. yeah. Wait, it's on the way to watch yeah. us. It's on the way to Manitou Beach. Yeah. We're just looking at the Beach, map right now. I didn't do this year. I didn't do that this year, and I usually do. But I prefer to go out there in the winter mm -hmm. and sit in the in the waters there. They're so therapeutic. Yeah. And I actually find the water there more therapeutic than Moose Jaw's Mineral Spa. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. My actually, my brother that we're staying with right now in his in his uh, RV pad here, him and his uh, wife now they they go to watch us a lot. Mm -hmm. They um they actually um there was a guy uh, that worked at the spa. His name is Randy. He was a massage therapist out there. Mm -hmm. he, they used to get him to come and uh, we would book a whole day of massage at her in her house here. And uh, everybody would book an hour, two hour time period, mm -hmm. and ha he'd have a full day of massages just in one one spot. Yeah, right here at this in, house. in Regina. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. Every time I've gone out there, I've tried to get a registered massage therapist, and you end up with the ones that aren't registered because the others are so booked. And I never plan ahead enough because we have some work meetings there once or twice a year, and yeah. so I'm always like, oh, if it's a registered massage therapist, I can claim it. Well. Can't get it because <laughs> they're too booked. Yeah. Well, this guy, this guy Randy was the best life I live. This guy Randy was the best massage I ever had. I mean, in my life. Van Life Rocks is Gina here? No, no Van Life Rocks is right. Van Life of Gina is Gina. Who is Who is Van Life Rocks? That's right. Um, he lives in Southern California. We don't have him. Yeah, you're gonna have to check out his channel. He's got some good stuff. 
And he always moderates for me so kindly without me ever asking. So he greets everyone that comes in. He's dropping people's links. He's I've seen that. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Yeah. See very, that. very thoughtful. And greatly appreciated. We appreciate you, Ray. What's his name? Oh, Ray. Okay. We've got to put that. Uh, Christian's doing it right now. He's putting it in our uh, Excel file. <laughs> in, our, in our guest list, our guest book. <laughs> Oh, you're just using my chat to get guests on your show. <laughs> no, no, no. We call it the guest no, I still book. have to come on there yet, but you guys do it so darn early on the Saturday, which is I my know, day. right? Oh. God, we were all wiped out. We were we were basically just going to. We were done. Yeah, we, we finished a series we were watching. So now it's like, well, what do we watch now? So uh, we've got two suggested series to watch so yeah we, my we, daughter my we, daughter suggested two tonight we were gonna watch one tonight and then check the other one tomorrow night but you know it's like it's it's overrated we have socal okay southern california yeah. oh okay so he is short straight to the point videos that's the charm i find i i have a short attention span if you hadn't noticed throughout this live stream <laughs> So I like things that are the point. Yeah, hell are you, dude? Van Life Rocks. Yeah. And Bushy says we're already friends, so they must already be sub to you. Yeah, we are. They're just, you know. Yeah, they are. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, they, um, there's a couple, like uh, Van Life Rocks. And, of course, we got hello, artsy dude. Yes, we have them. I'm up for Roy and Becky, and I'm up for daytime, or no. Daydreams about nice things because I have to start yeah. working. But on the weekend lately, I find it very easy to sleep in because I'm having a hard time sleeping at night lately. So yeah, yeah me too. I don't know what that. I, I know it's not I enough blame. exercise. I'm sitting in the house too much. Yeah. I, well, mine is I blame the baby because when I'm over there, I always I always tell my daughter, you know, I'll take the night shift. I don't care. Just make sure you, you know, pump the milk. Make sure I got bottles in the fridge. Go to bed. Well, she wakes up anyway. It's a maternal thing. Oh, I wished I had that when my son was little because my son woke up every hour on the hour. That's him. That's him lately. Uh, the last two nights, he's been doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, I did. Honest to goodness, this is going to sound terrible. He did it till he was four, till we left Regina. We moved out to Weyburn when he was four, and then he slept through the night. I oh don't know God, why. I will not tell her that. <laughs> So literally through my entire university degree, I had a child that woke up every hour <laughs> during the night for my whole degree. Oh my so it would have been nice to have oh had wow. a little bit of that. But you know what? Those times don't last long. Well, you know what? I had it. I had it with my mom. My mom moved to, um, she uh, married a farmer and she moved out to the farm. And uh, when I had my daughter, Amanda, I was fortunate to be able to go out there and leave uh, Amanda with her while I worked. So, I mean, I was, I was very lucky. And so mm -hmm. I just wanted to give a little bit for my daughter because it, I know she's got two grand, like I got two girls from um, her boyfriend's kids. Right. But she's never actually physically had a child until this one. So yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a growing thing. So. But she's doing see she's i want to have help but i have a really young mom like she was only 18 when she had me but she was in her 30s when she had the youngest two so yeah. i mean she still had kids at home yeah. when i had my son and she was working two jobs so yeah, yeah. she just didn't have the opportunities back then yeah yeah you know, if she if yeah you know and the thing is though yeah oh my god good honor because man that's wow it's tough yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Ray with Ray with Van Light Rocks. In fact, we are friends. We are connected. Yeah. Uh, just I never, just never put them. It was probably when we first started. Uh, I think maybe we met on one of the early weekend RVing chat uh, live streams because that's where we were introduced to this community. Oh. We were we were sent over through a link to uh, Millie and James's channel through. Oh, yeah. Right. through Kent and Lisa at Living Light RV, one of their videos. So we happened to get on there and said, well, our next one is like tomorrow morning at 7, which was 6 a.m. our time. <laughs> uh, but I got oh. up and got on. She slept in. 
And it's like, you want me to come on? What does that mean, come on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got connected into the community with Van Life with Gina Payne, and I think that was the same for Van Life Rocks, yes. too, if I'm Ray, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But that's pretty much how we got introduced into the community. And it's been really nice. But at the same time, yeah. it'd be nice to expand more. A lot of us are doing yeah. the same yeah. stuff because nobody can really go anywhere right now. So then it's like, right. okay, I'm on a channel about travel and I can't go anywhere. Right? See, we, had, we had a lot of backlog of raw material, yeah. raw, raw footage. So uh, we've been able, like we took two months off, so we really got backlogged, you know, when all this was going down in, in uh, April, May. And so we, we got two months behind. So we were, we were six months behind in, in our raw material. We're just we're almost home to be able to in our videos back in May. So we're editing mid to late March right now and edit finished so we can close season three and open season four with, you know, we're at the camper and says, instead of traveling in this, then we'll be at the airport and then we'll go over traveling in this and we'll be pointing to a plane. So that's how we're going to kick off season four. Season four. Um, so mm -hmm. we're almost caught up, but we had stuff that we could keep editing all summer. And the live streams, when we first started going on the lives, people were very confused. Are you in Mexico or are you in Canada? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Because our videos yeah. were in Mexico and our lives were in Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is confusing. Yeah. Do you have any difficulty in Mexico with um, the language? Like, do you know any Spanish? Is Has that been a hurdle for you? Poquito, poquito espanol. Um, yeah, so a little, very little. Until, well, Christian, you grew until, up speaking French. That's not much of a stretch, right? It's not so much. About 70% of the words are make sense, like they're close. But then the other 30% is like, oh, my God, how can that mean? <laughs> this, you know, or, you know, what? where we have one word is three for them to, yes. you know, for the same yeah. thing. Um, like yo and it. It, it yeah, hasn't been is. it hasn't been that you know I went to Spain as a kid and I was actually starting to speak Spanish too like I spent the summer in in Spain but with that's my a mom Spanish seven. isn't it It's a little different but still I it could is I, I could understand it by then and I spoke it a little bit but then I lost it And um, you it too But this okay so I, in Cabo, we never really had to learn because it's a tourist town. So oh. when you stay, when you stay on the main drag, it's basically it's all American and Canadian. So yeah, there's so, nobody. Yeah, and our son, our our Mexican son, is Spanish. So uh, we were able to leave town. Son? We have a Mexican son. <laughs> when I okay, long story short, when I first went there in. Uh, uh, let's see, it was eight. So two, 2008 with my sister, I met this boy, uh, Manuel. I met him on the street. He looked like my son from Canada here. Um, long story short, we had a good conversation. Uh, my sister and myself went to meet his mom, and he, she made a big spread of food for us, and we were strangers. Like, we had no idea who these people are. Mm -hmm. But just because he looked like my son and I was missing him, and uh that's it he we, we fell in love we've been talking ever since and then when i met christian we kind of adopted him and that was it we put him through university so he's our son really he's actually he's actually a beneficiary on the deeds of our land in mexico yeah so basically the the beneficiary information doesn't go in your will it goes right into it's hard copied right into the deed so all five kids own 20% of that property when we kick the bucket. So they got to figure it out. But we figured, <laughs> so we figured Manuel will take it on, right? Oh, Manuel will. I mean, he, that's his, that's his home, mm -hmm. you know, and if the kids, if the kids have any problems, that's why, you know, it's, it's a win-win because for him, he has, he has property there now. Um, and you know, if, if ever, 
heaven forbid something happened and he needed to sell it, he could sell it. But like, I mean, if the kids don't want it, he's going to keep it. So, mm -hmm. right. But so it's the whole idea is that this would stay in the family for generations. Like it, it'll never disappear. Hopefully. Uh, but, uh, but That's he's awesome. Spanish. He speaks Spanish. So, I mean, he's Mexican. So mm -hmm. uh, when I first going down, started going down to Mexico was when I met Tracy and it was in 2014. And I went back alone uh, in July and spent a couple of weeks with him and we rented cars and, you know, he took me everywhere. I was scared, like scared, right? New tourists had all the, the wrong perceptions of Mexico. Thanks to our medias. Um, Mm -hmm. But totally different. Baja is totally different. It's yeah. rural. It's agricultural. It's it's not big city cartel type stuff. Mm -hmm. And and so, but always had Manuel as a crutch, you know. So we never really had to learn the language. No. However, this year when we were at Orlando, we enrolled in Spanish class. So we took what four weeks, eight uh, weeks. Four. It was a four, month. It was a, a month. month. So every Wednesday. Uh, we went in, and it was just an hour. I figured yeah. it would be at least two hours. But, you know, we picked up so much. A but, lot. Well, because then you have to use it right away. Whereas if you take a class here, you don't use it. No. You don't hear it and, all day. And not, and not only that, because we're on the land, there was no English-speaking people in the area. So the workers next door, the, the workers, building the neighbor's house, they're all. all thank God for Google Translate. Um, so, and now, you know, you got to translate right into messenger, right, right. And right on the keyboard, uh, translates always on. So uh, it's always hot, but we did learn a lot going to class and, but we kept going, but we only did four weeks and it was a pain in the ass because we couldn't go anywhere because we had to be in class every Wednesday in total Santos. Yeah. So it's not like we could just pack up the rig and say, Hey, let's go boondock on some of the beaches. So, but we kept doing it. And we, we'd always go back right from the beginning and we'd start with the sounding and uh, the numbers. And so we'd always go back to basics and we started over many, many times yeah. and kept going. But when we got into Seer and Estoy and uh, all those irregular verbs are... Irregular verbs are the tricky. And that's the ones that you use every and day, right? Use I am, time. you are, you know. <laughs> and, uh, Estoy bien? So we started we started talking again about it and it was coming back real fast this time because we did spend a lot of time and effort to learn. So we are gonna enroll into yeah. class again and it's probably just enough to get us going again. Maybe we'll do the first and second block and then we're just there's just so much good stuff on YouTube that you really don't need to go to class. Mm -hmm. Hello RG that's just so kind, hey? He's so sweet. I know. I love There's I love their really uh, good people out there. there. <laughs> What's that? They're they're low they're local. Reminds me yes. of the Stella beer. Yeah, it does. Oh uh, uh RC dude. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, yeah. RC dude. They're they're local. Looks yeah. like looks like the Stella beer logo. Stella Antoise. Si. Okay, I have another question now while I have you here. So you work remotely when you're in Mexico. Do you have a Canadian phone that's getting forwarded to you in Mexico? How do you handle work calls? This phone, it's on TELUS, $12 a day, up to 15 days a month on the billing program. And it's like you're in Canada. You get, you bring your, all your, all your calling, your calling plan, your data, everything comes with you. It's like taking your plan, your Canadian North American plan with you. Not with Telus, and I just renewed a contract yesterday so that I could get a new phone. So uh, I don't know. And I, I looked at them and there was really no other way of doing it that, thank God, I've been in, with Telus for years and years because I was from Alberta. And uh, they were good to me when uh, I wasn't too good in terms of paying my bills, you know, 15 years ago. And <laughs> they took me back on. And, you know, as a client when I needed them, and so I've stuck with them, and they've been very good to me. Well, my, I have two phones. I have mine, and I have my work one. Now, my work cell is this that work cell number, because I'm on the road a lot, but my office phone is now forwarded to that cell as well. So I need people to be able to text me, 
because a lot of people I work with don't necessarily have the income, right, to, to make a long distance call or they'll message me and I call them. So right. why am I not worried about it? I still have my old phone. I could just contact them that way, but I just don't know how to forward now this so that they're not calling me on a Mexican phone number. That's tricky. We had we had lots of challenges with that. Uh, you know, people talk about having phones with dual SIM cards and yeah, but it's still that's fine. You have a local number and you have your home number, but you still have to have the home number come to the local Mexican, you know, tower. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not an easy solution, unfortunately. I think even if I could just access my messages and then call back, because I've heard a lot of Mexican plans are really good, aren't they, for calling international to them? Is there no yeah, Mexican phone? Yeah, I, I heard plan. that too. Like this is our this is our Mexican phone. It's just plain. It's like mm -hmm. this, this is my Canadian phone. And this is a Huawei Chinese knockoff. Yeah, yeah it's cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, but for, what was it, 400 pesos? Yeah. 300, 300 pesos? Three, yeah, it was three something. 300 pesos uh, uh -huh. for a month, like pay as you go as you for a month. And it gives me four gigs of data. So it's the call forwarding thing, you know. And you know, you try Skype and it doesn't work, right? There's well, magic, if you need to do magic appointments, there's very specific programs because of security issues that I'm allowed to use. Like I can't I can't use Zoom, I can't use Skype. No. Yeah. I'm dealing with people's confidential information. So but I'm fine on the phone right now, but if I leave canada i just yeah. there's gotta be a way that i i don't even know who to contact yeah. to figure that out so the good news is is that you just renewed a plan and it's only two years right so you have two years to figure it out that what personal plan you should be on because the problem is is let's say this is okay let's do this this is your work phone this is your personal phone you transfer to your personal phone and you have a plan that you can take your plan with you to Mexico, say, tell us for $12 a day up to 15 days in the billing cycle. So it's not cheap, like 160 bucks a month, but now your work phone can call you in Mexico. So huh? in two years, your work phone is transferred to your personal phone. Okay. So the calls will come to you. Yeah. Let's say you have a Mexican phone now. So here's your Mexican phone and you want to transfer your work phone to it. Yes. The problem with that is that your work phone is going to be charged to send that call to Mexico. Yes. Anyways. Yes. It's it's a transfer, but just think of it if one phone was calling the other. Yes. You would need a plan for this Canadian phone to send those calls to yeah. Mexico. Yeah. So that's why the telephone. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't I don't care think that the health region's gonna put that extra on my plan. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. It's it's and it's I'm fortunate because my business pays for it. Do I like seeing that extra 160 a month on my bill? Because we just bought new phones, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, and mm -hmm. we got her a watch. We were we were Apple before, so we had iPhones. So I went to Samsung first. She had an iPhone and, and an iWatch. She loved it. Says, "Well, I'll tell you what, if I you're coming to Samsung, you know, you're coming to the dark side with me." And and <laughs> so I, think I never she, I never I never wear my watch. She because I don't has, like it. So she had the latest phone. So she's got a better phone than me. I got her the watch. She couldn't get the one she wanted because of the My Sharon Cyrus. They were out of stock. So I got her to buy one for now, which is more the man's watch. You know, it's the bigger bezel. So I said, well, I'll take over that one. We'll order you the other one. Well, she doesn't use the watch. No, it's not even that. It doesn't It doesn't seem to have the same features. I can't I can't swipe. I can't. It's, it's just a different it's animal a, altogether. It, I don't a, like it. You, gotta, you don't like the change. We I don't like, like new things. 
you, you got you have to play with it and kind of just get the. It was the same thing with. I Tim. like Apple. When I went to Samsung, it was for work and I hated it. But you know, after about six months, I started seeing. I saw the light <laughs> after I went through the dark. Yeah, I was always Samsung and then went iPhone. See, she went the other way. I I would never go back to Apple. Never, never, never. And the biggest thing is that this is a little computer and this is like a little hard drive in here and you plug it in and you can see all the folders and all the files and all the pictures and all the documents and all the downloads. Mm -hmm. Everything is possible. Whereas the iPhone is you plug it in and all you can get is your pictures kind of sort of. And if you take them off, you can't put them back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I just ordered a, Oh darn it. What is it called? It's like a power bank kind of thing for backing up on my computer. Um, I forget. I had my brother search it on my phone under my Amazon account, and then I just hit buy. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I want a little memory stick. It's a big. It's like a big memory oh, drive. Power. What you bought? That. Uh... Uh, you mean like a, a juice box, like a, a battery? Like recharge. No, it's to back up data. It's for oh. data. That that thing that you oh, bought for like, the kids. Like an external hard drive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I just ordered one of those because oh. when my new computer went and it just got the hard or the hard drive replaced, so I lo I'll probably have lost everything. So I don't know. Oh, I just couldn't figure out that phone catch. Who said what? Tell us all about it. I love. Tell us all about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Quite scared. I, I want to just uh, kind of just kind of point out here. Uh, I think it's. I don't know if it's Boucher, S T. So, I think it's Boucher. When we speak too fast, they can't follow. So I'm wondering, Boucher, est-ce que vous parlez français? Uh, pas la, oh, she said before she uh, can't keep up if you talk too fast. So, but, um, Maybe. so I'm not sure if that's just let us know. We we well, I tend to really he talks talk fast, fast when I uh, no, but I think with keep up words, I think that comment came fast. through and you started a little bit of French there. Yeah. Um. So RV reviews by yeah. the Air Force guy. Hi, so, Paul. Yes. Um, I went to the Dominican Republic a few years ago, and oh, they had an they are called international plan. But still, oh. my phone, you're right. Like, my phone. Oh, she meant Spanish, sorry, not French. Um, oh, French, okay. So my, so, but it's my Canadian so phone that's still the issue. Yeah, you want the Canadian phone at least. I did check with. Are you with Sastel? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I did check. Oh, they didn't have anything at the time, but you know, a lot of times you can get packages. You can get traveling packages. Oh yeah, um, I, and I, I know. Right now, it's like five dollars a day for a limited amount of data. Oh, yeah. Oh, the interesting one is that I, I have a North American plan. So I have yeah. unlimited calling throughout North America, but not Mick. Okay. And that, well, I can yeah. make unlimited calls to the States, but not from the States to Canada. That's right. And so I couldn't make calls. So my plan came with me and I had a U.S. plan. So uh, I had a few uh, U.S. people contact me and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about something. So silly me, I called them. And then I saw the charges on my bills two months in a row. I did this. And they said, oh, yeah, people from the U.S. can call you, but you can't call the U.S. from Mexico. That's not included. Because I'm now in another country, right? It's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like me being in Canada and trying to call Mexico. That's not part of my plan. So I was a little upset about that. But now that I kind of think about it, it kind of makes sense. It's really outside. So I'm wondering if an American phone plan, because I still have my old phone. So if I got a chip for that phone, mm -hmm. so it's a U.S. number, 
And our my cell phone plan will let me call to the US. Like, so if the, I'll just make sure the work phone is on that same plan, right? Um, it, I could, but then how many times can you have a phone transfer a call, right? Because it would transfer to the US and then have the US transfer to the Mexican one. Does that make sense? Like have another forward right. stop, but that's just too many things. Yeah, but if you wanted to do it, I mean, the only, at least when I checked last year, so this information is a year old, is TELUS has the plan. I mean, what you could do is pay out the phone to buy out your contract and move on to TELUS. Oh, I just did this yesterday. It's like a 15 I know. Phone. Hey, isn't there, hey, isn't there a 10 day buyer's remorse yeah, there is. cancellation? You can cancel. You have, you have yeah, you have 10 days. Yes. Consumer Law of Canada. Yes. It's the cooling off period that. Uh, any contract you can cancel within yes. 10 days. That is right. They did say that. Yeah. But what am I doing? I'm getting my phone through who? Tell us. Am I going to get the same kind of phone? Yeah. They might even have a better deal. Yeah. See, we've all, and, and there are, you know, the closest Telus shop though, I think we, is in Saskatoon. The actual, the actual, yeah. No, there's one. one in Regina? There is one in Regina. Yeah, there is. There's a big Telus store in Saskatoon. But yes, there's one in Regina. You yes. can just call them to see if there's any deals. Yes. Because uh, I'm gonna write this down. <laughs> every time like when I when I traded in my iPhone for the Samsung at the Telus store in Edmonton, at West Edmonton Mall in Edmonton, they were offering I don't have them free wireless earbuds, beautiful earbuds. They're usually two hundred bucks. They threw them in. For free. For free. When we got Tracy's phone. There was a, you could get the watch. Um, the watch at half price. The earbuds for free. Yeah. And so they're always kicking something in. But usually, like, we didn't mess around. It's like we figured we tend to keep our phones for about four years. So we didn't really care about paying the extra 50 bucks a month for two years. And then we'd keep it another two years. Um, it's, oh, it's one of these plans that you got to tell them if you're going to trade it in or not at the end, like two months before, and they really knocked down the price. So we went with the latest phone for me. And then by the time you're almost a year later, nine months later, uh, we traded in Tracy's phone. We got her a new phone and we did the same thing. Um, and you'll get the latest phone for a decent discount, but you still got to pay the phone every month, right? Which is probably what you're doing now for the term of the contract. So I'm not sure what I your plan is, but we tell us. I've never had when I've renewed my phone. I've always gotten the cheapest version until this time. <laughs> well, what TELUS does is that they give you a, an option to say, uh, give it back. It's the give it back option. So it's a little bit like leasing a car. You're leasing it, not buying it, and you're expecting to give it back to them at the end. So it's the same thing as type style as a lease. So you're paying for the difference as to what the phone is worth now versus what it's going to be worth at the end. So you're only paying for that that value that you're hold that you're carrying. So you pay a little bit less per month, but you have to update your contract before that expires. If you let it lapse to the end of the term of the phone they will automatically bill you for the residual value of the phone at the end of the contract. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me on that one? So in other words, let's, let's say this phone is $1,000, and they say at the end of the contract it's going to be worth 400 So we're only going to bill you every month for two years for the difference of 600 And at the end, like 30, 30 days before, you come in and say, you give, you, you give this phone back, we'll give you... The latest one you pick the latest one you want and we start again if not if you want to keep the phone then you have to pay out the four hundred dollars right then and there they'll put okay. it on your okay on your bill and you could do that right you could buy out the phone and then keep it for another two years if you wanted it's a good phone i just find phones you only get about four years max before they can't keep up you need the latest phones because they just they can't do what they used to do. Like yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason I upgraded is because for making videos, right? Now that and I'm that, doing this kind of stuff, it exactly. just makes sense. 
And that's why we did it too. Like instead of investing in a really expensive camera, which I don't understand why YouTubers buy expensive cameras to do videos because cameras are not the greatest video. So we went with GoPro. Well, not all of them do. There's quite a few of us on here. Well, not there's many of us in the chat, but I think we all use phones. Yeah. Uh, we got a GoPro. We did everything with our GoPro until it, uh, it kind of, <laughs> It kind of died. We had bad sound, and the GoPro. Oh yeah, six, the sound is terrible on them. I had I gave it to my son he, quite some time ago, but it's sound quality is awful. And if you hear our videos, like since midwinter, like our, anyways, our last videos, it started going. I think we dropped it or something in the mic. It's picking up noise and buzzing and all that. And we apologize in each video in terms of putting a <laughs> note on there. Um, <laughs> The problem is, is that we couldn't get a directional mic on it because the GoPro 6 didn't have a jack for the mic. You had to get a special converter box to put under, and nobody had them. Nobody, everybody was back ordered. You couldn't, not, not even GoPro on their website. And GoPro was advertising them at double the price, and people were still looking for them, and you could not get them. Yeah. And so we ended up going to Baja with no microphone for the GoPro. And we had my phone, and my phone does a pretty good job too. It takes it takes wonderful pictures. That's no doubt about that. But now we've got two phones: the GoPro with a directional mic, because we got the media mod that the camera actually sits in. So now we actually do have the jack back here for the microphone. Right now, what the GoPro is doing right now is that it's holding the directional mic for this live stream that I put on the table so it holds the mic <laughs> on the table. Uh -huh. So the mic's actually over here. <laughs> oh. So cool. can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Terrifying. So that's why when I put my phone down, you probably hear it really bad because it's right next to the mic. Oh. So, well, I got a lot of really good information from you guys tonight. I got to talk to... um. There's another Canadian that I know that has a U.S. phone. So I'm going to ask a bit again about how that plan works. Yeah, I've seen something. Did they mention something in the... Uh, did someone do it today? Just now. Somebody mentioned something about... Oh, RV Reviews. Was, he was talking about the Dominican. Is that the one you were thinking of? Uh, yeah. yeah, I saw the, that one. Yeah. And uh, I thought somebody else mentioned something else. Like, Everybody's got international plans, but they're kind of pricey. They only give you so yes. many minutes and uh, so much Street data. Boucher said, yes, U.S. has that 10-day return also. Oh, that's on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So the clock is ticking. You know, you know. by all means, we're not experts. Uh, I did check with Bell. I did check with Sastel a year ago. They didn't because... We check, right? Because I'm still not happy on paying twelve dollars a day for fifteen days of the billing cycle, you know, half of the billing cycle. And I think that's one sixty one eighty, twelve times fifteen people. Uh, I don't do mental math anymore. But <laughs> it's you know, it adds a fair chunk to the bill, the monthly bill, to do that. But I figure that that is the price of freedom to mm -hmm. get out of it and to only deal with one phone. Now, Tracy's been asking me to get a local Mexican phone for years. Oh, for Since years. 20, we should get a phone. We should get a phone. Since we, since phone. we <laughs> first went down in 2010. Since we've, that's, that's how long. And, you know, playing, I used to go down with a work phone and they, you know, put 50 bucks, you know, some international traveling plan on it. And the first day I'd run out of minutes and I'd run out of data. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's about, so do you guys ever find Wi-Fi to upload your videos when you're in Mexico? Uh-oh. At our, at our son's house. So we went into Total Santos into town. We tried different restaurants and bars. The speed wasn't there. No. Uh, or the okay. connection ability wasn't there. Uh, even the better places when we first started going there, had I used to clock them, right? When we did our Cabo series before we went RV. I would clock all these different places and they were great download, you know, 25 down, you know, but I never, 
but they're only like five up or one and a half up. Yeah. And up, it's all about the up speed. And we could not upload a video. We have we would have to go to Cabo to our son's house and spend a few hours on his Wi-Fi to get all, all our uploads done. Oh. Okay. So we will have the same problem at the Sunrock. They have it's like an RV park, lousy Wi-Fi. It's one that they got yeah. they give you the code and it logs you out like six times a day. And so <laughs> These are considered, so we're long-term stay. This is like renting an apartment. So we are going to get local internet service brought in. So we're going to bring in a router. So we're going to bring in our own service. We can oh. pay for the speed that we want so that we can continue doing these wonderful live streams. And <laughs> because, because we are now addicted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you know, especially when a person's kind of isolated a lot more, it, I don't know, I've really taken to live streams, whether I'm doing them or I'm watching them, more watching than doing, I guess, but I enjoy more them. Watching, yeah. yeah. I know, yeah. I've been a lot of, like, yeah. It is, absolutely, especially now, like, it was, it was pretty tough, it was pretty tough for a while there. I, I did. Uh, I went on the first live with Millie and James uh, one morning, that, that morning, that first morning. And then StreamYard, StreamYard, everybody uses StreamYard. It's like I thought it was mm -hmm. way more complicated. I went on StreamYard. Oh, yeah, it's free. So I went and got the free. It's like, I look at all these features. Damn, that's the pro version. Click, that's the pro version. Okay, let's try <laughs> this pro version. I was hooked. Within a week, I had tested a test live, and all of a sudden, all the people from the community came on. As soon as I went live, it's like, wow, this is great. And the first live was all about how to do live. Okay, does this work? <laughs> oh, I change the microphone. And it's like, oh, yeah, you sound good. And it's like, <laughs> like the yeah, first 25 I minutes. Doing were... the paid version as well, just because you only get 20 hours. And I was yeah. doing 20 guests a month and not always just an hour, right? Exactly. Well, for me, it was about the look to be able to customize the look and uh, you know, yeah, the customized. I think I, I feel like it looks better than it did when I had the free version. Oh, absolutely. You know, you don't have the StreamYard logo in the corner, and mm -hmm. you know, you have your own logos, your own pictures, your own overlays, your backgrounds. All that is the pro version. And what I really love is the video clips. I just love the video clips. It's so much easier to add it into StreamYard than try to open that other window and have it go, or you forget to get the sound on. And oh, yeah. It's well, so it's much easier this way. But you only get a uh, 100 megabyte file size. So mm -hmm. all you can do is your intro, outro. You know, you can't run a 10 minute video. We upload a 10 minute video that way, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, I was disappointed. And so I was playing with our intro, outro, and just trying to get little pictures. And as soon as I started putting a little video snippets in there, the file size started growing quickly. And I just wanted to tell a story about our Baja story, you know, in 30, in 30 seconds or less. And it's now about a minute, 45 seconds long. And it's really hard to do. The first time I expanded it, it was like 140 megabytes. So here I am trying to but that's why it's so rapid fire. It's like you can't, you can only stay two seconds on any one thing. <laughs> yeah. Tell that story. But um, I just love that feature, you know, just to play with that. And went online and looked for some free MP4 files and uh, these video snippets. So you just type what you want the content. So I did countdown clocks, right? All kinds of countdown. Yeah. Um, and so I use different ones now. Uh, I used a different one this morning, which was a, a rocket launch countdown. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know, before we run our uh, intro, outro uh, footage. So while people are starting to come to the stream. Yeah, so. I just uploaded my one minute um, kind of channel intro. Yeah. But still, it almost feels like it's not quite enough time. I don't know. So I, I hit the 30 minute countdown that's already on StreamYard. And when it gets close, like, and then I'll start, because there's that leg. So then I start it live. And then just before it, the 30 count, second countdown is done, I click over to that one minute video now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. That's exactly what we do. And then once the mi one minute video, we have a little clip of uh, Maggie right into the camera. So the dog is just right into the camera, right? Just mm -hmm. 
So we basically start at, so I play that clip on YouTube and say, Maggie says, good morning, you know? So, you know, hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, it's cute. So, yeah, yeah I'll have to get up early on one of these Saturdays. We're going to play this. Hmm? Pardon? Sorry? You no, froze for a second. Yeah, you did too. It wasn't us, was you? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. maybe. Uh, are, are we on there, the Wi Fi here, or are we on our own? Well, we're on their Wi Fi through our cell booth, through our Wi Fi booth. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, we should carry forward that question about uh, cell boosters, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe time, to, maybe time for at least myself to do a, a refresher just to have a look. It's been mm -hmm. over a year since we looked at that. The short sure. answer is, as of a year ago, as long as you don't need that, you're not traveling. Let's say, like, let's say a camper van. That your mode of operation is that you don't stay in one area. Of, you, it's about the, the the traveling and the sightseeing, not the RV park stay or right. boondocking mm -hmm. stay, like or long term stay. Then you want pretty much any of the good names will be good enough. But if you really want boondocking and being on fringe signal yeah, areas, yeah. If you really want maximum power to go get the signal. You want, I forget what it's called, but it's the one that looks like a triangle and you point it. So you take a nap on your phone. So you figure out where the tower is mm -hmm. and then you point the antenna right to it. So you're getting the strongest optimized channel. But it has to be outside, like on a rod. So you have to literally, it's like raise the flag and get it pointed. But if you're going to be in a place for oh, a while. Is that like Paul Barger's, the, the bread trucker. He just had a video where he um, showed how he straps it in behind his seat because his his uh, bread truck's tall enough for it. So I'm it not like sure. I and then, okay. I I'll didn't see that one. But it didn't. It'd be worthwhile, you know, to, I haven't done it in a while, to basically just YouTube search, you know, cell boosters. This is the Wii Boost. We have the uh, Solid RF because they approached us to do a installation and giveaway last year. That boosted mm -hmm. our channel like crazy. I'm thankful that they did that. I'm still not sure if the bloody thing works. You know, when... Uh, you know, when I bring the app up for signal strength, you know, and look at the needle, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so it's over here, and then I plug it in, and it goes up, and then it goes back down, and then it goes up, and then it goes back down a little. So I'm not quite sure. Uh, so it is a Wii boost and the directional also. There's there's so many levels of performance that you can get, and they all come with a price, uh, and that's the cell boosters. And those are separate to the Wi-Fi boosters. Yeah. So when well, you're which one to... person want? Like What's that? if I'm traveling, if I'm traveling, which which would I want? The cell phone booster or the Wi-Fi? Because aren't aren't I getting a hot spot off my phone? Yeah, but your phone's inside the rig. So if you want to get a good signal off your phone for both data and calls, then you need a cell booster. But if you want to pull up, let's say, to a Starbucks parking lot, go get a coffee and jump on their Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi booster can go get their signal inside the coffee shop, oh, bring okay. it back, strengthen it so that it's still strong right in your rig, and you can work right from your rig. Okay. You don't have to go into the coffee shop. Right. So when you're looking to mooch on somebody's Wi-Fi signal, you need a Wi-Fi booster. If you <laughs> want to boost your cell phone for your hotspot, you need you need a cell booster. I understand the so-called Wi-Fi boosters do not boost the signal; they only provide the level of signal that's available. Right. But just draw it into the vehicle. It's yeah. just yeah, it doesn't it doesn't boost it per se. I was able in Mexico to pick up, uh, I guess to, I guess to pick up something that was coming in at about thirty percent. Like usually, they it, you have to be fifty percent or over to kind of get that that to pick up 
bad signal. The okay. nice part, the nice part about having a Wi-Fi booster is that all our devices, so we call our Wi-Fi booster Tristan. That's our Wi-Fi. And okay. that's the name of our rig is Tristan, right? And he gets carried around by the big gray steed that's underneath there carrying it around. Um, <laughs> but basically, all our devices are connected to Tristan. So the only device that needs to be connected to a Wi-Fi every time we get somewhere is we just have to hook up Tristan to some Wi-Fi somewhere. And then every device in, in the RV is live. It's got a connection because it's connected to Tristan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now what I do for the cell booster, okay, so we do have the cell booster. Unfortunately, when we went to Baja last year, all the way down in California, a tree ate our cell booster antenna. It just sheared it off. <laughs> so, by the time we got to Baja, we had no cell booster. We had a cell booster, not functional. Mm. So we were hoping to see. So we picked up, we stopped at the manufacturer on the way back, and they, they replaced it for free. So we do have one now, but we haven't needed it. But what I would do is I would put, I would put the phone right on the receiver inside. So, like, you can't get any closer. Like, there you go. It's right there. And okay. So then that's your hotspot, and your hotspot is sitting right on the cell booster. So you can't get stronger than that at that point. Mm -hmm. I like the, the directional reboost. I think, based on what I saw last year, um, to do it over if I was choosing because we, we were – we were given one, right, for a, an installation mm -hmm. demo. If I was to pick one today, I would go with the WeBoost directional. That you, I, I still believe that that would be better, the best for us, because we're on, we're basically on, uh, uh, what is it, G4? What is it, G4, G5? Sorry. What's 4, 5, L, not LTE? What is it? 4, 5. Yeah. G4? I think so, it's, isn't it? Is it G4? Anyways, it's G3 in Mexico. It's it's really bad, and that's why we mm -hmm. can't upload from there. I can just I can just get my emails, and we can stream videos. We just turn the quality down to 144p, and we can stream. Um, so without having the booster there, it's really important that we get maximum boost that we can point right to the tower. No, I'm trying to remember who I talked to. I'm sure it was on one of the live streams, but I think they had said you had to get, if you were going to get a cell phone booster, you had to get that through your cell phone. Like for me, that would be SaskTel, or for you, that would be TELUS, right? Is that correct? Or does it have to belong to one of the no, no, telephone no. companies? Okay. No, 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 it has nothing to do with the cell phone company. Is that if you wanted... If you wanted a hotspot, right? If you wanted like a jetpack, you know, that was basically a hotspot, but it was just a box and all it does is give you data. That mm -hmm. you have to get through the cell phone company. But if you want something to boost the data, regardless of being a phone or a jetpack, then to boost that signal, then you need a booster. And the booster are done outside the, the, the mobile. Oh, I remember when I heard of it. I was in Best Buy because I took my laptop back in. It was in Best Buy in Regina in the East End. Maybe the young girl didn't know any better, but she said, well, they didn't carry it. And that I would have to go through Sustel. No, she was probably thinking of a jetpack or um, uh, like a wireless sim, you know, where instead of doing a hotspot, it's basically a card that goes into your laptop and that's the data. That's it. It's a cell. Oh, okay. Data card. Cause you would yeah. think they would carry something, right? I forget what those are called. Uh, but basically they give you data straight to how did you get, how did the rig get the name Tristan? Hang on to that. Uh, um, I'll leave it up while you're talking. So we remember. Okay. So, I might as well answer it then. Tristan. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's Tracy Christian. It's like, bing, there, there we go, ADD. It's like, uh, so Tracy Christian. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Combination Tracy. of your names. Yeah. But it was really funny Oops. because most people call their rigs like female names. And Tristan. Yeah, might be, yeah. Although life can be for everyone. 
<laughs> Wilson Electronics is the most popular and successful with their WeBoost. And I'm imagining this is American because their name is California Travel Videos. Okay. Okay. Um, so Tristan is like, goes back to like King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table. And I think he was one of the knights, but I forget the story. Actually, I have it on my, uh, what I call my uh, uh, YouTube, Tumbleweed YouTube settings. Um, I mean, I, I could read it for you, but that would be for another another Tristan time. Was a, a, a knight of the round table. He was not a knight, right? He was. He was. He was a knight, but he ended up falling in love with King Arthur's wife or fiance. And anyways, there's a story behind it. And then they run away. There's actually a movie now. Yeah, there's actually a movie. Actually, they did a, a movie about it. But that's that's. So you it named goes. it after some dude that stole. Someone else's woman? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, 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 it sounded good, right? Tristan, Tristan, it's like, oh, my God, Tristan. And the thing at the time is our daughter, Amanda, had a client, and his name was Tristan. And so we were having a contest um, to name the rig. So when we brought the rig home and we were doing our uh, Western Canadian Road Trip Challenge, we put it out there says we're doing a name you know competition or request and so tristan obviously came up with tristan and then we had already picked tristan um and so but the thing the best part is that tristan suggested tristan so he at that point didn't realize but he had won the contest so it was <laughs> perfect that's the one we picked <laughs> so it was like so it was legit thank god like it worked out because we really wanted that name and the fact that somebody came with came up with it was awesome. Nice. Yeah. So, so, so going back to cell boosters and Wi-Fi boosters. Okay, so we do have a Wi-Fi booster, but it also has LTE connectivity. Okay, so in other words, you can buy data. It's up on the roof, so it can get really good cell signal back up on the roof there. So you can put in a SIM card into it and get data. So you can get it from Wingar. So it's a Wingar Connect 2.0, and it's 2.0 because it's both Wi-Fi booster, and you can bring in cell data. It will give you data. So it's basically like hotspot, but it's it's coming right from right from the booster on the roof. <laughs> uh, we tried it going down to the states because we were running out of data. I needed it for work on the way down. We did try it. It was expensive. It was like. $79 US for 10 gigs and I went through five gigs one night because I think my solar my solar data controller started sending a whole bunch of history data history to the cloud oh no so I chewed through five gigs the first night uh, oh. or it was counting gigs differently than your cell phone provider does um, I wasn't quite sure but once you activate it with Wingar's SIM card that's in there and you activate it, once it's activated, you can then take their SIM card out and put in anybody else's, AT&T, Verizon, anybody else's plan. So if you've got an unlimited plan, unlimited data throttle to 50 gigs, whatever, for X, $50 a month, you can take that SIM card and stick it in there. And you now have data on the roof, the best signal that you can get right there. And it's being it's being circulated again through Tristan Wi-Fi um, to all the devices inside the uh, 4G, not G4, 4G. So your so, 4G phone would need a 4G booster to boost your 4G cellular signal. Also, like Linux owns we boost. So, but mine, you know what? My okay on my phone, I only have 3G or that light. LTE, LTE, yeah, yeah, what LTE. That? And that's the problem for us in Baja is that the tower that we're getting in town 30 minutes away is constantly going between 3G and 4G, 3G and 4G. So well, I had it on the it said you'll upload and download stuff faster with the both those versions of the light. It's like LTE VOL, but 
I was in my house, one bar of service for my phone. So then I switched it to the 3G and now I'm full bars again. Yeah, it does. I I really don't know. I'm not an expert on that side. But that would be a oh, great person to interview. You. Come on. That would, yeah, that would be a good person to interview. Let's go to see if we can find somebody, you know, from an electronics shop and bring them on. Okay, we'll you can do would. that interview because I'll need you to dumb it down for me. I've got we've got five weeks to get ready to fly out of here and we have a camper we gotta winterize and close up that we never only five weeks already. That oh my goodness. And trust me, we never planned on winterizing this unit. And so it's the solar system, the lithium battery. Um are you, are you leaving your solar panels up, just taking the battery out? Yeah, everything's staying except anything that's liquid that could freeze. Uh, we're going to blow out all the lines. We're going to put antifreeze in the gray tank, like just down the drain, not yeah. in the not in the fresh system. We're just going to blow air out of all the lines. So we're going to get that done. But I then we have to take the camper off the truck. Got to bring it down. Got to brace it because the the jacks are not strong enough to be sitting on there all winter. Mm -hmm. So I'm blocks like on four sides to take the weight off the legs and then once everything's in place and the slides are all closed and we're ready to go and i'm cutting the power and i can't just cut the power because the battery monitoring system so the shunt is tied directly to the battery it can't be on the other side of the main shutoff valve uh shut off valve shut off switch mm -hmm. disconnect, disconnect so i tried pulling the master power and there's three watts that remains for that BMS, that battery management system. So that means that the battery would eventually just trickle down to nothing within two weeks and it would totally kill it. Yeah. So now, so now I have to disconnect everything. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take that lithium battery out and put it in a heated garage for the winter. And now the camper is dead, right? There's no power. Yeah. It's dead. It's closed. Uh, we had never planned to do it. I was hoping just to leave it on the truck, close the master disconnect, turn off the solar panels, like the, the, the power to the solar controller, and walk away. <laughs> no. no oh, it's not you're happening. leaving it in a Canadian winter. <laughs> well, the other thing I even thought is we're on 30 amp service just to leave. A, and what I did is when we took out our converter out of the power panel, when we put in the solar, we didn't need a converter anymore because we have an inverter charger. Yeah. So that liberated, it liberated uh, a breaker. So I rewired that breaker to a receptacle in the basement so I could run a heater in the basement down the tanks so that when I'm running an electric heater up here in the camper, I can also run heat in the basement. Because if you're not running the furnace, the propane furnace, then there's no heat going in the basement. And you're starting to freeze. Right, keeping the tanks, the lines, and more importantly, the battery warm. Because you cannot charge a lithium battery below 5 degrees Celsius. So about 37, 40 Fahrenheit. Below mm -hmm. that, you can, you go below that, you will damage the battery trying to charge it. It mm -hmm. can discharge, okay, you just can't charge it. So because we knew we weren't going to leave till mid-October and it was going to get cold, this thing goes through propane like crazy, even though it says it's four season. We have eight pound ten, so we go through forty pounds of propane in the cold in like three days. So the electric heater was a great thing. Propane, like two big tanks. Twenty pounds, the the smaller ones, not oh. the thirty. This is the only camper of this size that has the smaller tanks because of weight. This is the biggest one they make. So that was one of the compromises we made. We made two compromises with this camper is a small bathroom and smaller propane tanks to get everything else that we wanted, which was basically a king size bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but by putting the heater up here, putting the receptacle in the basement, I'm able to run another heater. So I run them both on low, you know, those 750, 1500 Watts, you know, high, low yeah. electric heater, the, the yeah. ceramic ones. Uh, I have another one in the basement. So when it gets really, really cold, I have to run the one up here on high, the one in the basement on low, and I'm pulling about 22, 22, sorry, 2,200 watts. 
And if I'm not on 20 amp or more service, I can't run that on a Mooch dock, you know, mm -hmm. in somebody's house. So Definitely I can do that. Using the microwave with that. <laughs> so to go all around the story, the one thing that we thought that we could do is, okay, let's just leave the camper here. We'll just close the slides and we'll just leave heat on the basement. What if it shorts? What if the power goes out? Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, it's too much of a risk. That battery is way too expensive to risk it. So that's the downside of a truck camper, especially ours, is that our solar, our battery is in the front so that when the camper is on the truck, we can't get to it. it it's in the bed of the truck. Oh, so we so actually yeah, physically have it off before you can even deal with it. Right. So, you know, I, I know I can't point it right, but it's on the truck. Mm hmm So here, hang on, do it. Well, I can't really do it. I can't really demonstrate it, but let's just say no, I can't really show it. So I don't know what you're trying to do. Yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to do either, but Basically, once it's once it's on the truck, so if I'm driving, right, the camper's on the back. Well, right behind on the box there, just on the box, that is where the lid is to get to, to get to to get to the battery. I mean, you can imagine, just like your ambulance, there's not a whole lot of room to work with. So we had so little storage in the back garage that. I wasn't even sure I could put in the solar, but then when I started looking in front, there's an access hatch to inspect the, they call it an inspection uh, door. It's okay. basically like any cargo door, but you can see the tanks. You can see the both gray and black tanks. And there was just enough space. I measured, measured, and I can literally slide the inverter in just enough. And then I have a board before the inverter goes in, I have a board with basically the bus bars where all the wires come into the buses. Yeah. So I slide that in first onto the black or gray tank. And then in front of that, I bring the inverter, bring in the 110 in and out lines, and then back to the panel. And then I just, I put some little styrofoam blocks that holds it in there and I close the door and boom. There's just barely enough room for that. And then next to that was the original battery shroud. You know, it's like a plastic plastic case to keep the batteries literally outside of the camper. Yeah. So so the batteries weren't in the basement. So, so we took that shroud out and built a little kind of square so the battery sits into that square. And then we strapped it down mm -hmm. and closed that door. So as soon as you put the camper onto the truck, you don't have access to those hatches anymore. You can't access those compartments. Wow. So, so for us to shut down the camper this winter, we literally have to take it off the truck, brace it, block it, close, you know, get everything out of here that is freezable. We had never planned on doing that. We have so many things that have liquids in it. We have to totally empty our pantry. It's different when you're weekend camping, right? You yeah. put stuff in, you take it all out all the time. But when yeah. you live in it, you just accumulate and accumulate, and you have your home with you. It's like uh, deciding to move. You know, it's like sell your house and move. Well, just moving out of here is like we've been taking stuff out of here for the getting ready to leave for the winter, but yet investigating the possibility of driving across the border. <laughs> so every time, so every time we take something out, we say let's make sure we put it all in the same place in one little pile. So that if we have to just grab it and take it back to the camper, <laughs> we not forget anything and bring it all back and make a run for the border. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a lot of stuff involved in that. I don't know. We'll keep trying. We're going to make the promise that, you know, until we leave, we're going to keep trying to get across that border. But the window, the window of opportunity is, is closing every day yeah i don't think they're gonna make it any easier either well i don't think we have enough time let's just say we did have a friend that would be nice enough to change the bill from their name to one of our names 
and then it's got to go through a billing cycle and then you have to get the bill <laughs> and who knows what the most, border wants but most but things border. are online nowadays <laughs> but so, you gotta get through but you gotta get through a cycle so it generates a bill that's right and it's a monthly cycle so i think we're we're pretty much out of time on that one darn it had, had we known two months ago <laughs> We would have made it happen. Maybe this, for whatever reason, it's the way it's meant to be this year. It's definitely the easy button. We love it that we're going to have, you know, we love our property, but you can't swim mm. on the ocean there. It's on the Pacific side. Um, there's no gym. There's no gym there, so it's not like we can go to the gym. We can't go. We can go to the beach. We can't swim in that beach. Um, and we're far from town through a washboard road that kills the truck every time we go into town. So uh, this is going to be a benefit to go back the way it was before, um, the way we used to do it before. We used to do it in shorter bursts. So uh, now it will be interesting to kind of go back to that kind of condo life. It's not mm -hmm. sticks and bricks. It's just bricks down there. It's just cement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And, and to be and to be able to go to the gym again, you know, three, four times a week and take you on the journey of getting back fit and healthy again, and hopefully encourage other people to kind of do the same. Yeah, I think I would need someone here with like a cattle prod or something to keep poking at me to get me going. <laughs> That's just how it feels lately. It was, oh. it was, it was pretty funny because for years and years, Tracy tried to get me to go to the gym and even as we were setting up RV life, she was at a gym membership. And when we moved to the acreage south of Edmonton, she had to drive 45 minutes each way just to go to the gym. Uh, or, yeah, 45 minutes each way to go to the gym. And she was doing her YouTube channel, um, Tea Time with Tracy. And it was all about that in terms of exercising and, and you know, weight management and eating right and exercising. Mm -hmm. and I just gyms. I didn't like gyms. Ah, you know, it's like if I'm if I'm gonna do, you know, ex expend energy. I'm gonna do some, you know, accomplish some work out of it. Accomplish like do something, build something, you know, or you know, not just run in the treadmill to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna at least have some fun when you're getting your exercise. But once I got started in Cabo, the last time we stayed at the at this condo and. We started going. I was pulling her to the gym. I was getting up early and saying, okay, you don't want to go to the gym? Okay, well, I'm going. See ya. And, and I would leave her and I would go to the gym and I just absolutely loved it. You Can know, I so agree? I Look at that. We're keeping every... My God, we're keeping everybody up. Well, it should be an hour earlier for him, I think. It's only 11, 13. Although some people get up early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but it is Sunday tomorrow, so we're gonna try to sleep in. But that never mm -hmm. happened. No, you'll be up early anyways. Yeah. So you're just near Moose Jaw, right? You're in Moose Jaw or near Weyburn? I'm south. Weyburn. Oh, so you are, you are Weyburn. We were thinking Estevan too. No, no, she was from Estevan, right? She grew up in Estevan and would drive to Weyburn for coffee. We had that discussion. Ah, right. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, plus 50. What's plus 50? Plus 50. It cut out. So, yeah, everybody. So, oh, it's the plus 50 syndrome. I just can't remember anything anymore. I cannot uh, commit anything to... Uh, to the brain there's no more <laughs> no more no more room at the end <laughs> <laughs> oh boy and i'm like this at 45 oh lordy what is it going to be like when i'm 50 actually let's see for me it was about 47 48 it actually was like kind of the last time i quit smoking i had quit smoking mm -hmm. and for some i want i thought i don't know my memory just seems like the lack of nicotine took something that kind of robbed something in the 
synaptic <laughs> responses. You would think that it would be opposite because you're reducing your stroke risk and stroke, the key thing it affects is memory. So yeah, that's interesting. But, but you can have more asked. oxygen to the brain after quitting. But I think it's the signals, uh, uh, you know, basically the, the chemical, signals, chemical makeup and, and yeah. or, you know, the firing of the neurons. So you rob that chemical and I think it slows down the firing. It takes a while for the brain to actually huh. come back. From I didn't know. Didn't think of that. But I, that's why I think it was so drastic. You know, it was, it was so noticeable that, you know, I've attributed to that. I could make cause and effect for sure. But did you have to give up coffee when you quit smoking? Because they seem to go hand in hand, right? That, that's like, a tough. That's a tough one. The thing about quitting smoking, the best time to quit smoking is when you have a a radical change in your life, where you live, how you live, who you live around, uh, is the best time to make a change. At one point, I was a so I would not smoke. Well, we were in Canada, but when I'd go to Mexico, all of a sudden all bets were off. I was, I would drink more beer, and then so as soon as I started drinking more beer, I would then start picking up cigarettes. It would start with cigarios and then cigarettes and other stuff, and so I started to associate Mexico with smoking. And so what I would do is just the day walk into the airport to leave, go change for northern climate right so get out of the shorts and sandals and get into jeans and 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 uh, uh running shoes and then I'd, I'd, I'd stick a number two patch on <laughs> right after i just came in after having three cigarettes before i came into the terminal mm -hmm. and, then, and then i put a number two patch not a number one not a number three a number two and then that would kind of calm things down for the flight would not wasn't bothered by it because you can't you don't associate smoking on a plane anyways so, yeah yeah uh, no problem and i just leave it on i would never take it off till weeks and weeks later and it's just a theory i've always had it's always worked for me that it's just you a gradual because it always would dissipate a little bit of nicotine you never got that drop and and as soon as i ripped it off even like three, four weeks later, I would have a day or two that I would notice that it wasn't there. Maybe it was psychological, but because it was so slow and gradual within two months, I didn't, I was back into my home routine. I did not associate the anywhere in the home routine. Didn't matter if I drank coffee or did anything. There was nothing in that routine that triggered a reaction towards reaching for a cigarette. Hmm. So, I know my mom had used the patch and she would get terrible nightmares. So she had to quit using it. Hello, artsy dude. Oh, you're the same age as me. His main goal is before he turns 50 is to hike the Appalachian Trail. See, that just sounds like too much work to this kid. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like setting up a tent. That sounds like setting up a tent every night. Unless they have like lodges or uh, what do they call them? Uh, I guess it depends which way you want to do it too. Yeah. Definitely sounds like a lot of challenges mentally, physically, spiritually. <laughs> you know, yeah. it would definitely be an experience for sure. Wow. Good for you, buddy. Not for this kid. Nope. Not at this point, I don't think. No, to me, it's like just six kilometer walk into Cabo every day is good for me. And, uh, you know, we, we spend a little bit more time looking at the step counters and, you know, we get really focused on health and doing healthy things and, and having metrics um, mm -hmm. you know, to see that there's, there is progress and gain. So we slowly, you know, try to increase the step count every day and try to get up, you know, main get up and maintain that 10, 12,000 steps a day. Yeah. And, and I think the best day we've ever had down there was like 25,000 steps. And literally I got home and I just died. Oh, <laughs> I did but that in yeah. Vegas and I had five blisters. It was ridiculous. Well, not, not to that point. It was more like joints, hips, you know, knees. 
But I woke up the next day feeling absolutely great. You know, it's like to push through, to, <laughs> to push through the, like the marathon, you know, you push through the pain and uh, you kind of get that high, but getting that body going, you know, it's, it feels so good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maintaining it. Unfortunately, as you get older, it takes longer to get there and much quicker to lose it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember being a kid and watching grownups like go to exercise. And they had to stretch all the time. And I, stretching made no sense to me because I was a young, flexible kid. And it was like, what do you mean they're going to be sore if they don't stretch? Like, it was just so foreign. And now it's like, oh, I get it. I get it. I wish I didn't. <laughs> yeah and we and we find tracy and i find that diet now makes a big big difference in terms of how we feel how our body reacts how it feels how easy it is to hurt ourselves how mm -hmm. our joints feel how our spine feels like <laughs> when your spine starts telling you it's there you know it's like oh you ate sugar didn't you you're gonna pay for it <laughs> oh gosh I have to totally detox from sugar. It's gotten really bad in these last, what, six six months-ish? Yeah, us too. It's us been too. a huge crutch. Yeah, it's the my Sharon Osiris uh, syndrome. I believe, I believe it is. Like, um, but that's why we're, that's what we're gonna do this winter. If we can't RV life, then we're going to health life, uh, full-time health, health, healthy living. Good. Uh, and so we'll just bring you along for that uh, uh, for that adventure and that progress. Well, just even getting the vitamin D on your skin every day makes a huge difference that you wouldn't get if you stayed home for the winter. Well, we noticed the difference for sure, especially with the food too. The nutrients mm -hmm. are so much better down there. You know, the food doesn't come like seven, ten days on a truck. Yeah. It was, it was maybe picked two, three days ago when you know it was it's still got life in it. Yeah, that would make a big difference, wouldn't it? It does. Uh, but it's, it's time. It's way past our bedtime. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming up. That was awesome. I appreciate that. Not bad. Like eh, for, for a quick, it's, not, uh, it's not bad for a quick border update, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is just like we're visiting and other people are joining in. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah I can I used to be in sales I could talk all night all day the next day yeah. and uh, def definitely there's not I think there's almost no topic that I I don't mind talking about mm -hmm. except, except you ladies kind of went in a whole different area that <laughs> that was her that was her <laughs> oh my gosh well thanks so much and. Uh, yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing would be figuring out how to deal with the phone situation. That's really the only thing that's hindering me then at this point. Yep. <laughs> yep. That would be the only thing. It's, it's really wild when I take uh, uh, when I take video calls during the day and I have to do a video meeting and Tracy sits right there, right? So I have to take the camera. <laughs> Yeah. Put it on that computer and do just like what you did. Do you guys have a tour? I didn't check online. Do you have a tour of um of your uh unit there? Because that's just do we on have the back of a truck. So it's not a big full size camper. Oh yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, it's, the camper is it's a twelve foot long. It's the biggest one they make. It's got three slides. It opens up to quite an area. I don't know if the camera is really going to get. I I never know if it's going to. Here, hang on. I'm going to get up. All right, here we go. Camera tour. All right. So, from the table, you can kind of see that's kind of your standard, you know, Costco foldable table. Mm -hmm. So that's one slide, right? So the theater seating is in one slide and that whole wardrobe that's called the dressing area. Okay. That, that whole slide goes out. Then on this side, hang on. 
just trying to find the right spot. So this is the kitchen slide. So the fridge all the way to the counter here, this whole slide goes out. And then if we turn around here, the sofa slide also goes out the back. So it, it gives it roominess. This is a nice square. You don't feel like you're in a tunnel, like in a long tunnel. Yeah. So, but once all the slides close, that's it. You cannot, you can't even come in the door. That's so right. You know, I think I have seen some of that done on your channel. Cause yeah, you couldn't get through the, to the, was it to the bathroom? If the ones, yeah. if the kitchen slide was in? No, this one here. So the bathroom is, is right there. So when this slide closes, even if you try going around the other way through the bedroom, the slide is actually blocking access to the bathroom. So when you're driving on the road, you can't use your washroom. Well, we have to stop and we have to open two slides. Okay. Two and the three slides. But so when we stop, we open all three, you know, we'll we'll hit the bathroom, we'll make lunch. But typically Tracy will make lunch when we're when we're on a drive date and we'll just have a cooler in the uh, in the truck with us. Mm -hmm. with the dog cold water and just have you know something raw you know raw like salads or um, lettuce wraps or something like that and uh we'll just eat that on the run during the day we typically only eat once or twice a day so we're intermittent fasters so we usually don't oh. eat two, we usually don't eat till two or four in the afternoon yeah i gotta make some changes but i don't know 